is not a man that he should lie. Glory to God. So whatever God has prescribed for the body of Christ or prescribed to the believers in the world, when we see it, we have to be able to affirm that this looks like my father. This sounds like what God is talking about. This looks like the character of a believer in Jesus. So now I'm going along with that. This is what God wants. Hallelujah. Amen. When we see God, we say, yes, that's God. When we don't see God, we say, uh-uh, that's not God. That's not kingdom business. That's not Jesus. I don't want no part of it. God is pleased with a child that is really, really and truly willing to articulate the, the gifts of God that the God has given to them. The brain, the eye, the ears. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> That's why he said he of eyes to see. Let him see. Ears to hear. Let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord said. Amen. So we give God praise and we thank God. It's a beautiful morning. And 11 o'clock. I mean, I'm just excited about the word of God. And, um, you know, those people who listen to Choice Radio, if you listen to this program and you love the Bible, you love Jesus, you love the Bible. First of all, once you love Jesus, you have to be interested in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And don't feel because you are not educated, you won't be able to understand. No. God makes things very simple for us. Some of us, our wisdom comes through the articulation that we see in our own common way of looking at life. God has simplified everything that everybody could totally understand God. That's why sometimes I tell people, you might be, okay, you might be in the church, things like that, and your children or your husband or whatever, they see things totally different from the way you see it, and you think they're wrong. And you the one that's wrong. Because they understand certain things from the natural as God has given to every man the privilege to know him. God said it in Jeremiah 31. 31, he said, no more will anybody have to tell you how to know the Lord. Because you will know the Lord. <laughs> from the greatest to the least shall know me. Glory to God. Amen. So what we're we saying, we all are able to know the, the Lord in the measure of faith that he has given us or the measure of education in whatever capacity, whatever way. A man don't have to read the Bible and he still just know God and he's totally obedient to God by the Spirit of God and he's walking with God and he loves his father and his father loves him. You understand me? So God has made this thing very, very, very simple for us for those of us who have eyes to see and ears to hear. Now, during the week we've been talking about tradition. And the reason why we have to talk about those things because we must narrow this thing down to end up in the narrow part which Jesus said, narrow is the way, straight is the gate. Amen. Glory to God. But he said, broad is the road of destruction and many are going thereat. Every man's duty is to say, Jesus, if you said the way is narrow, I want to find that way. Glory to God. Are you saying that this morning? Would you be the person saying this morning, Jesus, if you said narrow is the way, whatever it will take me to get on the narrow way, this is the way I want to be. I don't care who mad. I don't care who upset. I don't care what friends I'm going to lose. I don't care my children going to walk away. My wife, I don't care. If you say the narrow way, I want to find that narrow way. Even if nobody's coming with me, I am coming to the narrow way. Is that you this morning? Is that you this morning? Jesus, I'm coming on the narrow way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm breaking every chain that bind me. I'm coming on the narrow way this morning. I'm coming with you. <laughs> this is the attitude of a child that loves their father. Glory to God. You love Jesus and you don't want to do nothing to make him seem to be a liar or look like a liar or feel like a liar. Or if he's a confused man, he don't know what he's talking about. This has to be the desire of every child of God. Glory to God. And when I came in this morning and I started going into this, and he led me to, to Deuteronomy, that scripture we quoted for you before, Deuteronomy 18 and 15. Because we are talking about tradition, there must be something about us who wants to find out the origination of all the division and churches and separation and all it, we must try to find out how could this thing be like this? Why are there so many ways and so many paths and so many? We all must try to narrow this thing down to find out because Satan is the one that wants to divide. He is the one that wants a bunch of confusion. He's the one that, but Jesus wants 
only one way. Hallelujah. Only one way. Hallelujah. Is to Jesus. And the Bible has told us that this is what we have to do. Follow the one he had sent. So let's take our Bibles and turn with me to Deuteronomy. We're going to begin there today. We bless God. We're going to open the phone a little bit later on for your um, individual input. But if you are out there this morning and we just like to engage in the word of God and look into traditions. We are speaking about traditions because many people, even me, before I came to Jesus, I was a part of the tradition. I was an Anglican, you understand? So whatever they did, you know, my mother, we went along with it. It was the Anglican traditions. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I think Wednesday, um, people say they celebrated Ash Wednesday and they put some ashes on their head. You know what I mean? And they walk around as if that means something. Well, it doesn't mean nothing if you're not born again. It means nothing at all, period. It's a foolishness. Hallelujah. Tell them I said it. It's foolishness. It's a tradition of man. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. So God wants us to root up every tradition that is contrary to the tradition of the kingdom of Jesus. Amen. Bless his holy name. All right. Let us turn with me. Well, let's go to Deuteronomy and pick this thing up from there. And every one of you out there this morning, let us ask God, amen, not me, ask God to open you up that you are able to receive the ungrafted word, that you can grow thereby in the things of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I feel so, uh, you know, um, I feel so excited this morning. I just, I feel so over illuminated this morning in the name of Jesus. All right, let's turn with me this morning. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18, glory to God. We're going to look at a few things as the Lord has put it into my spirit. We're going to join them together. We're going to align them perfectly without any, 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 any contradiction. Very simple, straightforward. God is great. Amen. We bless him today. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. You said if we lift you up that you will draw all men. So draw your children from far and wide that they can come out of religion and denomination and tradition and they can come to the work of God. That we can go out and see souls saved. See men bow before the king and repent of their sins and enter into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's do, do it with me. Deuteronomy 18 and 15. Listen to this. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. Underline this in your Bible. It's very important. Now, even the prophet Moses is speaking in that context, and he's saying, God is telling you, when that prophet come, forget about me. Listen to him. When that prophet come, hearken unto him. Don't forget about me. Everything I'm telling you now, whatever I tell you before, whatever we tell you, whatever we talk about, when he come, you listen to him. Forget about me. When that prophet come, you listen to him. Let's read it. Glory to God. According to all that thou desirest. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. He is the one that will tell you how to achieve it. Whatever you want in life, whatever you want in eternity, He will tell you how to attain it. So hearken unto Him. Let's do it again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, Unto him will ye hearken. You know, stop there for a minute. Keep your hand there on this. Let's just turn here. As it, let's just turn there for a minute and look at something right there together. Look at God. Look at our Father. Look at look at King Man. Hallelujah. Look at him. Turn with me to Malachi 3. Turn with me to Malachi 3. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Let's read. Turn with me to Malachi 3. Are you there? Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said here in Malachi 3, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. Hallelujah. And hear that. The Lord whom ye seek, the, the Lord whom ye seek, who you desire, amen, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's go back over to Deuteronomy here. So he said, the one that you desire, he has come. Amen. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 18 and continue here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go back to, to Deuteronomy 18 and continue here in the word of God at 16. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire anymore, that I, I die not. And the Lord said unto me, again, you know, again, listen to this. They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet. Amen. So God is saying it again. He has said it before and Moses said it unto them. But the Lord is saying it again. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. Like unto you, Moses. And will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Very important to listen to this because Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandment. Amen. He's not saying if you love me, you keep the father commandment. He said, if you love me, you keep my commandment because I am the one that is sent to you. Of course, we love the father. Of course, he's king, if king, 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 one is king, man. Of course. But the king man had sent us somebody to pick us up. Glory to God. Amen. The king has sent someone to retrieve us. Let's listen to the word of God again. Let's take it again from 18. Faith cometh by hearing and by hearing by the word of God. You have your Bible with me. Glory to God. You have your Bible there. Go ahead and glorify your God. As you read your Bible and you get liberated in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. 18, 18, 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. And will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Glory to God. All that I shall command him. Amen. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name. Glory to God. I will require it of him. Amen. Glory to God. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. We're talking about tradition of men, and we are talking about traditions that have went through from the longest time and still continue now, even our time, to continue to promote different brands of religion, different brands of churches, different brands of denominations. Oh, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a this, I'm a that, you're that. Okay, where did you get that from? Has it come from Jesus? Glory to God. So that is what we are looking to. So now, first of all, I want you to remember this. The word of God declare, when that prophet come, you will listen to him. Amen. God said, when the prophet come, everything I will command him to tell you, you listen to him. I am God. I am God. Yeah, we know you God. I'm God. But when this prophet come, listen to him. Glory to God. Thank you guys. Bless the name of Jesus. All right. Let's turn to the book of John. Let's turn to the book of John. Let's turn to, to Matthew first. Let's take Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Let's take Matthew 28 first. And all those listening this morning, we pray that you just cut off your religious mind and your re religious receptacle. And let's look to our Father's word. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Matthew 28. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Matthew 28 and 18. Hallelujah. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I, I, me, I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So Jesus is exercising the authority that was already prophesied that would happen. He is saying, you do what I tell you to do. Whatever I told you and commanded you, that's what you're going to do. Forget about what your forefathers told you. Forget about Moses. Forget about all that. I am telling you what you should do. Amen. Glory to the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's turn to John now. Let's go to John. And let's take John, John 14. I mean, I know you have your Bible, but sometimes we look at these things and we don't think of how all these things are right here in the Bible. They're right there. They're right there before you, right there before you. Hallelujah. But if your stance is from a religious perspective, you are only going to see it from a religious angle. But Jesus wants you to come to him. Amen? That he, Jesus, will lead you into all truth. Why? Because men are fallible. Men can make mistakes. Men can be taken over by spirits. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's read the word of God, John 14. You have your Bible. Let us turn, beloved. And we are reading from the King James Bible. For those of you that is unaware, the King James Bible is the Bible that has been handed down from a long, long time. King James was a holy man, loved the Lord, and the Lord has inspired him to put the Bible together, translated from Hebrew and the different texts, and put them together, and he had sponsored that and brought some great men into England, and they put the, the King James Bible together, and therefore it was authorized by the king. Now, once the king put his seal on something, nobody lower than the king could change it. And the same time, God is the one who create and, and, and bring, you know, whatever. So God has not allowed a king to be in England again so far. So nobody was able to have the authority to change anything from that Bible. So that word would be able to go forth for a certain time and dispensation. God knows what he's doing. So now because even the, um, the gay rights people try to have them remove the word sodomite and different kind of word from the Bible. But the queen said, hey. My, I cannot touch it. I cannot touch it. A king must be instated and then he have the power to have things change from what a king has done. So all these researches, we need to have them. Amen. So, so not, that's why they came with the new King James. Amen. And in the new King James Bible, where the Bible that it's thought about Sodomite, in the new King James Bible, it said shrine prostitute. Amen. So it no longer said Sodomite in the new King James Bible. It said shrine prostitute. Amen. So when it said sodomite in King James, it said shrine prostitute in the new one. And they, as they make more volumes of the Bible and more versions, they keep changing more words to suit them or more words to suit, you know, the, the way the world wants to go now, that anything goes. So they keep changing the words in the Bible to accommodate their lifestyle. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But if it's good for the king, it's good for me. We read in the red letter edition, King James, right here on the Choice Radio. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So bless God. So that's a little back there for you. Glory to God. And God is interested also in the church saying the same thing. Amen. So we should not be reading different Bible. You have this one. No, no, no. That's not God. That's totally not God. Period. And any man who tell you different, he's not speaking by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. God wants us to speak together, have the same mind. Amen. If you bring up a word, whatever I'm thinking about the meaning of that word, I have to have the same thinking of the same word. Amen. So even if the word might be different and means the same thing in its context, the point is your mind will not be as my mind because I'm thinking of a different word that you are thinking about. And God doesn't want confusion. God wants us to be of one mind, one heart, one spirit, one truth that his spirit can prevail in our congregations. Amen. We bless Jesus. All right, let's go back to this here in John 14. Let's read this text and see what is being said here. Because many times people who agree, who argue from a religious perspective, they like to defend this and say, oh, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandment. You're right. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandment. Amen. He didn't say, if you love me, keep God's commandment. He said, if you love me, keep my commandment. Although he is in the Father, the Father is in him. But according to the word of God we have read before, Deuteronomy 18 and 15, God said, I will send a man 
I will send a prophet. When he come, you will listen to him. Amen. Because I will tell him what to tell you. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, we, you know what happened? Let's read 14, but we're going to come back here and take something from... Um, hallelujah. You know, you know what? Let's, let's take... Um, John, you're right there in the same page. But just look here in John 13. John 13, hallelujah, and 34. We're going to come back to that. John 13 and 34, he said, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Amen? By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. So Jesus is saying, a new commandment I give to you. Amen? A new one I'm giving to you right now. Now we know many people take it and say, well, if you love God, you got to do this, 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 mean that. No, no, no. It's just what it said. Love the Lord. Love your neighbor. Love each other. Glory to God. That's all I'm saying. Whatever you want to take and make it in your theology, that's up to you. Well, if you love God, you're not going to do that. No, 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 no. Just what he said. It's just what it mean. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. So let's go to John 14. Let's go to John 14. 20 minutes after 11. Choice Radio. Your life, your salvation, your choice. And all those listening on the internet all over the world, we bless God for you. We are grateful to be here as we look into our Father's holy word. Amen. The word of God is already blessed. Let's read the word of God. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Hallelujah. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can you, we know the way? Jesus said, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Do you understand this? So we can talk about keeping God's commandment and all that. You can talk about all that if you want. But he's saying no man can come to the Father unless they come to my prescription. Unless they do what I tell them. Unless they hearken to what I tell them. Unless they observe what I have told them. Glory to God. Is that clear, brethren? Jesus is making it definitely 100% clear. Red letter edition, King James Bible. He said, listen to this. If ye have known me, ye should have known my Father also and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him glory to god philip said unto him lord show us the father and it suffice us i mean it satisfy us amen jesus said unto him have i been so long time with you and yet hast thou not known me philip he that hath seen me hath seen the father and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believe thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The word that I speak unto you, I speak it not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Amen. So we see that confirmation here concerning the word of God, all the way back in Deuteronomy 18.15, that God said, I will put my words in his mouth. Isn't that clear? Yes. So Jesus is saying, what I am telling you, it's a confirmation that God has sent me. And I'm telling you what he is requiring, what he's saying, what he's asking you to, to, to do. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go to 11, 14 and 11. John 14 and 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Believe me for the very work's sake. You know what? Stop there for a minute. Let's take a look in John 3. Glory to God. As we're talking about 
tradition today. We're going to take it from a different angle. But we're covering the same thing. John 3. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you there? John 3. John 3, and let's take it from 2. We're going to come back to that, John. John 3, and take it from 2. The same came to Jesus by night, which is Nicodemus. Hallelujah. Well, let's take it from, 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 from 3 and 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know. We know. We know. All of us. Everybody, we all know that thou art a teacher come from God. Thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So there's a confirmation even from the Pharisees admitting that we know you come from God, brother. We just don't want to obey you. <laughs> We have our own tradition for Moses. We have the things we've been doing for, for years. But we know you're from God. We know you're from God. We know very well you're from God. Glory to God. But we have our own little circle. <laughs> you know, we have our own little things happening over here. But we know you're from God. Yeah, yeah we know. We're not that stupid. We know you're from God. We're not going to follow you, though. But we know you're from God. I'm being sarcastic, but that is the level of what is happening. This is what has been conveyed over years and continue up to today that people have all this religion and tradition that they are doing and they are trying to condemn you and think that you're breaking this and you're breaking that and you're breaking this. But why are you not listening to Jesus? Why are you not listening to Jesus? That is what the problem is. And Jesus is saying, God is saying that any man who do not listen to my prophet, that prophet I will kill. Now, the, the problem with human being and mankind, we like to look at things from the angle of, well, this looks like it's normal. Come on, I doubt this man could be a man of the devil. Oh, I doubt this person. Come on. I mean, this person do all that. They could never be going on to hell. No, no, no. No, that's you walking by sight. You better believe the word of God. You better believe the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God said that false prophet will die. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to believe it. But if that's what God said, that's what God said. That's why many shall come on that day saying, Lord, Lord. Why do you think they're saying, Lord, Lord? They didn't, they didn't think it was true. They feel, oh, God is not going to punish me for that. Come on, come on. Come on, yeah, yeah. They have no faith in God. They have no faith in the word of God. We have to have faith in the word of God. If this is what God said, I believe it. Glory to God. I don't care how it look. I don't care how you try to dress it up. I don't care how you try to make it look. I don't care. If it's not of God, I condemn it. This has to be the model of the follower of Jesus. Because he said, my sheep hear my voice. They will not follow another. They don't care how you try to colorize it. I will not follow another. And this is what the church needs to do. Because as the time becomes more and more evil, it will be harder for you and I to really and truly hold on to that narrow path. Glory to God. That's why God is raising up a remnant right now. God is raising up a remnant people right now. And we have to be willing to hear as God continue to unveil the scripture that you and I are able to hold, take a hold on the way, take a hold on the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's go back and continue our reading here in John 14. Glory to God and look at this. So we have confirmed that the scribes and Pharisees, Nicodemus being a ruler of the Jews, came and admitted, we know that you came from God. We know it. We're going to see this thing unfold even further. But let's look at this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, 14 and 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Many religious people has no faith to pray for nobody, 
for no healing. So how could they follow Jesus if they don't have the capacity or don't have the faith to pray for healing and deliverance? Well, they are not his disciples because he said, my disciples, that's what they're going to do. That's how you're going to know they're my disciples because they have faith in me that they are going to seek to see you saved, seek to see you healed, seek to see you delivered because I have given them the authority. Amen. So how many denominations that don't believe in signs and wonders, don't believe in healing and miracles? Tell me. Tell me which one of them are you part of? They don't believe in laying hands on the sick and recover. They don't believe that. No. Some of them even tell you it's already done away with. That finished already. That was when... <laughs> Let's read the scriptures, brethren. Red letter edition. King James. Hallelujah. Glory to God. John 14 and 12. Verily, verily. Truly, truly. Yes, yes. I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Because... Because I go unto my Father. Hallelujah. And whosoever, whatsoever, sorry, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. If you love me, Keep my commandments. So many times people argue from that. Oh, yeah, what Jesus said, if you, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandment. Keep my commandments. And what he said before, a new commandment I gave to you. Hallelujah. So Jesus, as we see the scriptures confirmation, for those of you paying attention, God has prophesied this to the prophet Moses. We know that the scriptures say the law came to Moses. But grace and truth came to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And Moses said, when that prophet come, listen to him. Amen. Don't listen to me. Once that prophet come on the scene, forget about me. Forget about everything I told you. I am not the way. Hallelujah. It's like John the Baptist saying, I'm just the forerunner. I'm not the way. I don't even know where I'm going myself. Glory to God. So we see the word of God is... Showing us everything clear as daylight. If we are paying attention to the word of God, we can really see how all these religions and denominations and tradition came into being. It's just for a lack of for, for, for a lack of obedience to God. Men have their own minds. So we saw Nicodemus admitting, we know you are a man of God. True. But I am this. I am a that. I am a Jew. I am a scribe. I am a Pharisee. I cannot get involved with you. But I know you from God. But we have our own little religion going on over here. I cannot get involved. Brethren, we have to make our calling and our election show according to God's mandate. According to the Holy Scriptures. According to the Word of God. For some of you, you need deliverance from religion. You need deliverance from tradition. You need de deliverance from a lot of different things. Because guess what? Every denomination have a spirit that governs it. Every belief system that you engage into above the name of Jesus has a spirit that governs it. And once you enter in, it holds you and it does not want to really relieve you. You have to purpose in your heart that I am following Jesus, that you can break out. Every spirit, every religion has a spirit. Trust me. Every religion has a spirit. Glory to God. And that spirit is real. And that spirit will try to validate what he does. There are scriptures he will show you to try to validate his, his premise or his angle of the gospel. But there is only one Jesus. There is only one way. There is only one truth. There is only one church. Glory to God. But as we read the scripture, we are looking at some characteristics that must be a part of the believer in Jesus. Because he's saying, I am going to the Father. Glory to God. And I am giving you power. Glory to God. That you can tell somebody, because I belong to that kingdom, and I follow the Jesus of the Bible, I follow Jesus of Nazareth, here goes. 
in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Rise up. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. So that would be the expression of a follower or disciple of Jesus. Because why? We are by faith exercising the power that has been handed to the church of Jesus Christ. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you receive me? Glory to God. Well, let's receive it at the word of God. Amen. So Jesus is saying here, 14 and, and, and 14. Let's read the word of God. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. We know he's in the Father. But according to the scripture, the Father said, I'm going to speak through him. Glory to God. Amen. Let's read the word of God. Hallelujah. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give unto you another comforter. Amen. Glory to God. Well, the disciples were comforted when Jesus was with them. When they needed bread, they were comforted to know he could have provided a miracle. Amen. When they had hard times, they were comforted to know that he, God, can provide something through Jesus. Jesus can do something. But he said, look, and I pray the Father, and he shall send, he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. How many denominations that do not believe in the Holy Spirit? They will tell you, yes, we believe. But from what context do you believe? And how is his operation manifested if you do believe in the Holy Spirit? Well, well, you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't try to colorize it. Don't try to beautify it. If you believe in the Holy Spirit, what are the attributes of the Holy Spirit? Or how does the Holy Spirit manifest himself? That's what we have to find out. We brethren, once we are Bible-believing Christians or followers of Jesus, this is where we get all our information, right here in the Word of God. Amen? Glory to God. So he's saying, now listen to this. And I will pray the Father, 16, and he shall give you another comforter. Amen? That he may abide with you forever. This is a representation of spirit and truth. If I'm with you everywhere, then I know all your truth. If I'm with you everywhere, I know you are walking with me because I'm with you and you are in me. And if you die in me and I die in you, we die in the spirit of God. We die in spirit and truth. So not on Sunday or Saturday, all those things don't mean nothing. Whether Sunday, worship, Saturday, all those things don't mean nothing. Because what you're trying to say by Sunday or Saturday, you're trying to say on Sunday the spirit is coming, but on Monday he's going to leave. Or you saying, oh, on Saturday he's coming on Monday he's gone let's wait till next Saturday and be holy again let's be in the spirit again on Saturday next Saturday we're going to be in the spirit with God next Saturday we're going to have spirit and truth or next Sunday guess what Sunday oh my God it will be spirit and truth glory to God no that's not Bible he said the comforter will abide with you always hallelujah glory to God hallelujah amen Hallelujah. Listen to this. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but he know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Well, many people don't like the Holy Spirit because they cannot live the contrary lifestyle because guilt will overtake them. The Holy Spirit cannot dwell in a vessel that is not hallelujah optimize for holiness and worship to a holy god so they discredit the holy spirit because he unveils every contrariness hallelujah glory to god that's why a place where there is no holiness and no godliness every evil work is present every evil work is present oh first lady and this and that and i'm a bearer and all kind of garbage no Holy Spirit is there. No God is there. They have their own God. They created their own God and their own system. And they're carrying along like if this is about Jesus. It's not about Jesus. It's about you. So he's saying, the spirit of truth, glory to God, which the world cannot receive. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the world cannot receive correction from the Holy God. Hallelujah. So they create their own religion, their own practices, their own behavior system. Because why? It helps them to live as if. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That God is with them. But they have created that own religion. They have created that own belief system. Because what? It's comfortable for them. Amen. Glory to God. But Jesus is saying here very clear. Clear. Look at this. 
even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Amen. Because it seeth him not. Amen. Glory to God. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Amen. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live. Ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that had my commandments, he that had my commandments, and keepeth them, he, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be what? Loved by my Father. And why is that? Why is that? Because God had said, I will put my words in his mouth. Glory to God. Now if you realize in, in all the scriptures, there is no way that Jesus told people they have to keep the Sabbath. No, but as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath. Because that was his custom. He was raised in their custom. To bring in the custom of heaven. Amen. So while he was with them. He did what was required of Moses. Until the power came. Until the time of his dispensation came. And then he would reveal the new way. That's why we see a distinction in the, the book of Acts. The temple and the church of Jesus. Amen. Because he said I'll build my church. Well if he say I'm going to build my church. If the temple was already the church. Or if the church of the, the Jews and everybody was the church. There was no reason to say I'm going to build my church. You see what I'm saying? Glory to God. Amen. So there is no reason to say if what we have is already what God requires to bring something new. If what you're doing is already acceptable by God, then why should I bring something new? If what you have is already substantial to inherit the kingdom. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, so Jesus is saying that if you keep my commandment, because I am telling you the way of the Father. Amen. I am telling you the way of the Father. Amen. I got to go, but God the Father, I will pray that he, God, will send you another comforter. Amen. So as we said before many times on Choice Radio, the problem with the world is sin. Amen. The mediator between God and men is the Holy Spirit. Amen. The problem with religion and denominations is the factor of the Holy Spirit. We all do not believe in the Holy Spirit and we don't have the Holy Spirit together. Because if we have the Holy Spirit, there will be no reason for division and separation and contradiction. Am I right? Yes, I'm right. I'm very right about it. Hallelujah. The scripture cannot lie. Jesus is one. He said, I'm going to send you the comforter. But how many people believe in the Holy Spirit? They will say it in their mouth. Then you ask them, when did you receive the Holy Ghost? When can you tell me that you know on that day I received the Holy Ghost? On that day I knew it. I knew it from that day my life was never the same. I was in Gava. No, I knew it. And that's what God is saying. We must have a truth that when we came into fellowship with Jesus, there must be a confirmation. Amen. God is not a man that he should lie. And, and brethren, we must believe the scriptures. Amen. We must believe Jesus. Otherwise, we'll be deceiving ourselves. God do not want us to be religious just, just for, for, for religious sake. No, he wants us to come the way he had prescribed. He said, Jesus is the way. Jesus said, I'm going to the Father and he's going to send you a comforter. When the comforter come, you're going to know because he will make himself known to you. And therefore your life shall begin in me. I'll be in you, you'll be in me. We will have the same idea. We'll have the same intention. We'll have the same motives. We'll be pointing in the same direction because our Father, he is going to destroy the earth but he wishes for none to perish so the desire of the father will be in you we'll be going about together seeking souls for the kingdom of heaven because why the comforter from the father has told you what the mission of my father is he wants men to be saved so now we together on the same exact mission for souls but by what way by the way of the father through the holy spirit hallelujah glory to god Hallelujah. Now, as we continue in the word of God, hallelujah, bless God. He's saying here in 21, let's do it again. Hallelujah. John 14 and 21, red letter edition, King James. He that had my commandments, 
he that had my commandment. Hallelujah. He's not saying he that have God's commandment. He that have my commandment. Amen. Glory to God. And keep it them. He it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. Glory to God. And I will love him. And will manifest myself to him. I will manifest myself to him. I will manifest myself to him. When you are born again, there is proof by God that yes, you are a new creation. Now, two things can happen. We can nurture that spirit of truth that we can develop and be empowered even more to validate our transformation or we can smother it. Amen. You can receive Jesus and just be whatever lackadaisical way and that spirit is just smothered, quenched, so to speak, and it's just null and void. There is no development. There is no growth. We can sit under any doctrine. We can follow any foolishness and don't cry out. Don't scream out. Smother the Holy Spirit. Follow any darkness. Follow run after prophecy. Run after this. Run after blessing. Run after water. You know, you can do any foolishness because you have smothered the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So as we look at this scripture, we see that Jesus had prescribed a way of his true church. He's describing to us what is relevant for any man that believes that he is the Son of God and that he is the way to God. Hallelujah. Amen. That we can know how to follow him. And we saw that all the way from the Old Testament prophesied by Moses. Amen. That this is what's going to happen. And Moses telling everybody very clear. When he come, listen to him. That means whatever he tells you, this is what I want you to do. Don't do your own thing. Whatever he tells you, this is what you to do. Okay, now, so what we saw with, with Nicodemus. Nicodemus admitted, we know you came from God. We know it. We know you came from God. <laughs> but as much as they knew he came from God, they resisted him every, every, every step of the way. <laughs> they resisted him every step of the way. So now we have all these different religions and denominations that continue to resist Jesus. Amen? Somebody say, I'm a Catholic. Why? Because when you say that, they now tell you we have the freedom to wine and dine and party and have women, women we want, live how we want, and go to church, put ashes on our head, and oh, we're Christian. No. No, you're wrong. You're totally wrong. But you're hiding behind a religion. You're hiding behind something. Amen? So Jesus is saying that we need not to be offended by the gospel of Jesus because the gospel is the only way that you and I can be saved. Let's turn to Matthew 13. Let's turn to Matthew 13 and look at this contradiction going on all over the Bible as Jesus tried his best to get men saved and men are trying their best to stay in darkness because the light is too bright. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. We bless God for Jesus. We thank him for the word. Hallelujah. The word of life. Jesus Christ is indeed Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless God. Hallelujah. Let's see which one we're going to take. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So we saw in, in, in Matthew 13 and, and, and 57, And they were offended in him because, sorry, but Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. Very important again to understand. Even in your own household, you will be denied of being a new creation. <laughs> because your mother and father wants to continue in the tradition. And light has come. But men rather darkness more than light. So they will try to smother your light. <laughs> so what I'm saying, I'm saying we as believers in Jesus, from every angle, the devil will try to quench the spirit of God that is being manifested in us. And we have to take heed of those things because that's the only way we are going to make it if we're going to serve the Lord Jesus and be, be effective to believe that he has done what he has promised to do. Amen? By giving you the Holy Spirit. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Let us turn to the word of God here in um, Matthew 15. Matthew 15. 1149, we're going to open the phone line in a minute, but we just want to go through this because we're talking about um, tradition and we are talking about those that are offended by the word of God. And every one of us must find out, am I offended by Jesus? Am I offended? Am I ashamed to change my life? Am I offended that he's asking too much of me? I mean, you don't have to give up too much to serve the Lord. I mean, come on. Am I offended? That he knows all my heart. He knows. <laughs> Am I offended? Every one of us brethren will have to come to that point. Am I offended at Jesus? Amen. Let's read Matthew 15. And we're going to just compare and contrast some notes in the texts. In the mouth of two or three witness, let every word be established. We heard from, the, from John and we're now hearing from, from Matthew. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's read the word of God. Matthew 15. It's right here for us. Then came... To Jesus scribes and Pharisees then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees and one of the attributes of the scribes and Pharisees the head of them they were mainly lawyers educated people very educated amen glory to God and they tried to find all kind of logical ways to you know <laughs> to, to, to validate their sinful nature let's read then came to, to Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, which were of the of Jerusalem, saying, "Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Why do your disciples, as people like me and you, <laughs> let's read, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Now, what would have been beautiful here?" Why would your disciples, or why is your disciples transgressing the law of God? <laughs> or why are your disciples transgressing the commandment of God? No, they're not saying that. They're saying, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Well, the tradition of the elders, some of them came from Moses. And you remember Moses said, when the prophet come, hear him. <laughs> That means when the prophet come, put away your tradition. Forget what I told you. When he come, he's going to take the baton from there. So when he come, you follow him. Amen. Glory to God. Let's read it. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he said, he answered and said unto them, Why do ye, ye, that same word again, ye, mean all of you. All of you. Why do ye? Remember Jesus told Nicodemus, I say unto you, singular, ye must be born again, plural, all of you. So he had the same kind of language. Why do ye transgress the commandment of who? God, by your tradition. Hallelujah. Amen. So a person going out there now, putting some ashes on their head, smoking a cigarette, living with a woman, they're not married, all this kind of... What are you trying to say? Jesus said you must be born again. Can't you hear me? Why are you still putting some ashes on your head or going about and doing some sacrament or going some box and to some man? What, uh, what happened to you? Why are you doing this? I am telling you the way to the Father. Why are you holding on to your tradition? Why are you holding on to your tradition? Why? I am telling you I am the way. Why don't you want to come my way? Glory to God. So he's saying, hallelujah. He's saying here, Let's read this. Let's read this. Let's do it again from three. But he answered, that is Jesus, because they came to Jesus. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. But he say, Whosoever shall say to his father or mother, It is a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have he made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. So what God is saying, you are making the commandment or the requirement of God of no effect in your life because you seem to want to hold on to your tradition. 
I'm a Catholic. I'm an Anglican. I'm a this. I'm a that. Yeah, that's why we do that. That's why we do that. Yeah, we'll keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. And see where you're going to go. Keep doing it. I don't care how big your, your pastor is. I don't care how big your priest is. I don't care how big your bishop is. You tell him to call me. Hallelujah. Let us talk about it. Glory to God. Let's talk about Jesus. Hallelujah. So he's saying you are making the word of God of none effect by your tradition. Hallelujah. Any one of you out there who wants to follow your tradition and don't follow Jesus, you are in danger of your soul in hell fire. You don't have to believe me. But thus said the Lord, this is the word of God. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, I'm a this, I'm a that. Well, go ahead. Amen. But God is calling you to consider your ways. Consider your ways. Consider your tradition. Is your tradition bringing you to sanctification? Is your tradition promoting holiness? Is your tradition giving you a heart to care for the homeless? Is your tradition bringing you to a place to testify the goodness of God in your life? Is your tradition bringing you to sanctification? Hallelujah. Are you guilty for living with a man you're not married or doing something outside marriage or whatever it is? Are you convicted? Hallelujah. So what he's saying, thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. So he's saying the tradition that you continue to uphold will blind you. Hallelujah. From the requirement of God. It will blind you from seeing what God is requiring of you. And this is what we pray for every brother, every sister, everybody. Hallelujah. There are people that I know that are Catholics and whatever, and you try to talk to them and they tell you, oh, yes, yes, I know, you know, but, but you know, yeah, what you know, well, well, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I know spirits are real. I know the devil is real. I know unclean spirits are real. So I know these people are bound up in spirits, but they don't believe it. They don't believe it. They, they think the rebellion is just trying to protect, oh, well, you know. No. You have to rebuke the devil, especially once you can read the word of God yourself and see what the scripture is saying. Then you have to repent from your religion, repent from your, from your denomination, repent from your tradition and cry out to God. That's what God is hoping that we are willing to cry out when we see our life. Is that lining up to the tradition of God or to the things of God or the commandment of God? We have to cry out. If you listen to this program and you're hearing me and you say, wow, you know, I mean, he gave the scriptures. He's not just saying things off his head. He don't sound like a madman to me. Might be sounding a little overexcited, but he's giving the scriptures. He's going along. You need to cry out. You need to cry out because the Bible says, when the unclean spirit come out of a man, he look for dry place, seeking rest and find none. He go and get seven more spirit more wicked than himself. Now, what the Bible is telling us, Anytime we start looking for God or we start coming into the knowledge of God, the devil is going to come back harder to get you back out. Hallelujah. He's coming back harder because we remember, when you are born into this world and you come into this world from a sinful nature, that unclean spirit is within you. When you are born again, you remove that old spirit and you, remove the, you come with a new spirit. But if that new spirit is not fed properly, He's not fed in the word of God. He's not nourished up in holiness. You are not filled with him to capacity. You leave room for the unclean spirit to come back in. That's why the Bible said when he come, he see the house empty, swept and garnished. He go and get seven more spirit, more wicked. So now he come and he fool you up with the unholy spirit. And the last state, it means your last condition. Amen. To come to God is worse than the first time. So the first time when somebody told you about God, you say, oh, well, you know, I might think about it. You know, maybe I visit the church and, you know, you're kind of open-minded, you know. When you came to God or you had a knowledge of Jesus and you didn't stay filled in the things of God, when the devil come back, the next time somebody invites you to church or to whatever, oh, yes, 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 well, yeah, kind of busy tomorrow. No, no problem. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Yeah, 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 you're right. You will find every excuse. Because why? The devil now is masquerading inside of you as an angel of light. You will never do it. You just will talk about it, but you will never do it. 
You will never repent. Even if you know about church before, you will always say, oh yeah, 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 yeah. But you will never come. Because why? That devil never wants you to go back close to anything about God again. Especially any serious ministry that is preaching Jesus. Now if you're you know, in some kind of foolish place where people just jumping around and making foolishness, yeah, you could go there. That's no effect. God not, you know, the devil don't care about that. If you know you're not lifting up Jesus, you're not worshiping God in spirit and truth. The devil don't care about that. There are many churches the devil don't care about it, period. He know all of all you're going to hell, period. He know it's foolishness. You don't want to believe me, you don't have to believe me. If you think just going to a church is serving God, you're wrong. You're totally wrong. Period. You're totally wrong. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So the devil know where not to go, what to go. He knows. He understands. Amen. Hallelujah. So what we're saying, according to tradition and religion and denomination, all these things, you and I must come to a place as we read the scripture. That is why Jesus said, Study to show yourself approved unto God. You do it for yourself because you can't trust nobody. You can't trust nobody. This is your life, your salvation, your choice. You study it for yourself. Or either you come to God, you can't read, but come to your father. Say, God, I want to be right with you. Father, I want to be right. Show me by vision, revelation. Do something for me. I want to make it to heaven. And my life doesn't line up with the Bible. I know, but I want to come to you. When God sees that you are serious and you mean business, I guarantee you that God will visit you personally in a way that you can articulate in a way that you can know with all the shadow of a doubt that this is God. And God has put it in my heart. God has told it to me. And now I am affirmed. No, I don't need to tell me nothing because I know that God has spoken to me. I came to him with a broken spirit. I came to him with the right mind. I came to him with the right attitude. I wasn't puffed up. I wasn't trying to hide my sin. I came. I told him all the truth. I know he knew it already, but I told him all. I lay everything on the line and I told him. And now he has given me the peace that pass it all understanding. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we look at the offense in the word of God, it is important to know that that which was is that which is. That which is done is that which will be done. There is no new thing under the sun. The same way men resisted God then, men are doing it even more today. Resisting God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's read it. Matthew 15. Let us read the word of God again. Let's read it. Let's continue in 7. 15 and 7. Ye hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying. These people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth. Honor it me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. Now there are two ways to analyze that scripture. There are people who is doing things because they were taught that by somebody. They grew up in their tradition with that way. That's what they knew about God. So they're not doing it willfully. Some are doing it ignorantly. There are some that are doing it because it's the best thing for them. There are men who want to be a Muslim because you can get as much woman as you want. How many wives you want? You like women? Get more. The best religion for you to be is in a Muslim because you have money, wife you want, you like woman, go. More woman you get, more you want. Be a Muslim. You could play holy if you want, but you know that's what you're going for. You're not going because you want to serve God. But that's the best place you could fulfill your fleshly desire. Glory to God. Amen. A man not preaching about holiness and righteousness. That's the hole you want to go. You don't want to go to no real church. You want to hide out in some place where nobody tell you about sin. You love that. Pastor talk a bunch of nonsense, only foolishness, and you come and sit down there and fool up your ears. Oh, kiki, kiki. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, kiki, kiki. Oh, pastor, so funny. Oh, kiki, yeah. All of all, you're going to hell. Glory to God. So what the scripture is saying, they honor me, but their heart is far. Because why? Out of the heart proceed the things of the kingdom. Amen. Out of the heart will show exactly who you are. What you are about. Are you a child of God? Do you care about souls? Hallelujah. That's it. Are you about your father's business? Because the manifestation of the heart will be seen of you. Amen. So some people, they are in it because they grew up in it. And they never tried to get away from it. They never sought the truth for themselves. Or they are comfortable to be religious and still be able to enjoy the world. 
That's why we need to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. So God is saying, once you come of age, the same way you choose what shoe to buy, what food to eat, God is hoping, well, if that person really care about eternal life, I mean, you want to know what school to send your child. You want to know all this. Why are you not finding out about eternal life? Why are you not laying hold? You know you're going to die. I mean, for God's sake, why are you not paying attention to what? So God, you see, God is a, he's a balanced God. You know, God not going to force you to do what you don't want to do. But you know what? You have to purpose in your heart that I know I'm going to die and I am going to find out what is the true way to follow Jesus. What is the right way to come unto God? Hallelujah. That we're going to seek him, that he will give us revelation, that we can come to the knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's read. But in vain, 9, 15 and 9, Matthew 15 and 9, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. So God is saying it's vain. It's foolishness. It's a waste of time. But that is what they're doing. I can't stop them. They're teaching things of men as if it's the commandment of God. Hallelujah. They're teaching things that they have learned from the elders as if it's the requirement of God the Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's read it. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Hear and and understand not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man but that which cometh out of the man this defileth a man now we can see the scripture right here in the same context as before for they worship that way but their heart is far because why the heart will produce what is on the inside of that man if the worship is right the manifestation will be seen on the external amen Glory to God. If God is in you, by the way you carry yourself, it will manifest the kind of Christ that is in you. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So the kind of Jesus that is inside of you will be seen by worldwide. Everybody know they'll know what level of respect you have for God. They will know how sanctified you are from the internal. Hallelujah. It will be proceeded outside. Let's read. Then came his disciples and said unto him, listen to this. Then came his disciples and said unto him, knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Are you offended? Are you offended by your tradition? Are you offended at Jesus? Are you offended by the word of God? Is God asking too much of you to serve him? Is he asking you to put aside too much? <laughs> you know, I, 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 my wife was looking at something yesterday some woman who said she was with some pastor used to be living the life and then she got divorced and then she went homeless and whatever whatever and now she rebung again and she have some book whatever about single honey and yes yeah, save save single honey and some kind of some kind of stuff like that so she's trying to say that she got a book inspired by god how to speak to single woman i'm single and i'm horny you know this kind of nonsense Saved, single, horny, and yes, or looking sex and all this kind of stuff like that. Now, where in the world will God ever inspire such a foolishness? Where in the world? And, and she actually say, saved. If you are saved and you're sanctified, you're joking. You're crazy. Those things would never ever be a priority in your life. Period. If you are saved, saved, biblical saved, God the Father, King of kings, Lord of lords, Alpha and Omega. If he's your Lord, you talking about saved, you know, single and looking sex. Which God will tell you that? And people are running crazy. Running, oh, Lord God. Oh, yes, she's a great writer. Oh, great book. Oh, yes, she was a first lady, you know. Oh, yes. Where could that ever be of God? God of the Bible, Jesus. Where? Where? Hallelujah. Brethren, the days are evil. The days are evil. Gird up the loins of your mind, brethren. The devil is real. The devil is real. Hallelujah. And we have to be about God's business. We must be about the Father's business. Because he said the devil is going to come as a ruined lion. 
He's going to deny. He's going to disguise himself. And we have to be willing to say, God, fill me with your spirit that I can serve you, that I can live for you, Jesus, that I will, I'll be not taken over by these contrary spirits in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now what we're looking at here, we're going to open the phone line just now. Matthew 15 and 12, it's a very, very important verse. His disciples are shocked to realize that the scribes and Pharisees are offended. I mean, this is the Son of Man. This is Jesus. This is the Savior. This is the man that is performing miracles that nobody can do. This is the man from God. And you offended by him? You mad because he tried to correct you? Are you? Let's read this. Then came his disciples, comma, and said unto him, comma, knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But this answered and said unto said he answered and said every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up glory to god hallelujah if we are not born born of the water born of the spirit born in christ we all shall be rooted up hallelujah because we came into the world as a sinful being we came in with a sinful nature that's why we must be born again planted again hallelujah in the name of jesus amen he said let them alone hallelujah they be blind leaders of the blind and if the blind lead the blind both shall fall in the ditch now you and i need faith to believe that scripture we need faith to believe that what jesus said is what he means because you and I always are going to look at the flesh and say, well, I doubt he's talking about that. Because this looks so good. This song's so good. This song's so educated. This song's so eloquent. They know so much of scripture. I doubt that is God. No. 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 Jesus is saying, whatever my father didn't plant, he is going to root it up. That's it. Amen. So don't care how much, how, how your priests look, and you, 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 the Pope look, don't care how they look, once they are not preaching about Jesus, once they are not speaking about repentance and turn to the living God, repent in the name of Jesus, they are not of God. I don't care what you think about them. Glory to God. We walk not by sight. We walk by faith. We believe the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We don't care how they look. I don't care what they say. Once they are not preaching Jesus Christ, who rose again from, uh, from the dead. One they're not preaching Jesus Christ, his crucifixion, his death, burial, and resurrection, they are not speaking about the same Jesus of the Bible. And we must come to that place and believe God. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, broad is the road of destruction, and many there be which go there at. And why they are going there? Many are offended at my words. Many people are offended at the word of God that he say you have to have one wife, or this is the way you're going to live. They are offended, so they want to choose the religion they want, the denomination they want, that appeal to their fleshly desire, and the worldly, hallelujah, ambitions. Glory to God. Amen? So the question this morning is, are you offended? Am I offended? Amen? Let's open the phone line 12 minutes on the other side of 12. We bless God for you today. Thank you so much. As we ask him to open the eyes of our heart this morning. Amen? Bless the name of Jesus. 347-663-8638 The phone is open. We bless God for you this morning. We thank you for engaging with us here on Choice Radio. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you have a question this morning, something to share, probably a correction to make, you know what I mean? We bless the Lord. And if you want to speak on the same context, the same topic of tradition, and offended by the word of God, Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. We bless Jesus.
347-663-8638 and we're speaking about tradition and this today and we're speaking about being offended by the word of Jesus. Very important. I have to find out if I'm offended when the Lord touched my heart to tell your wife, say sorry. <laughs> say sorry. I just repent. <laughs> Are you offended? The big man is so big and bad and your wife correct you. Hallelujah. And you have to think about it. You think you're a big man of God. Yeah. Brethren, God is just so awesome. Amen. We give him praise today. We bless God for Jesus. If you have a comment this morning, give us a call. Because many of our mothers and fathers and grandfathers are going to hell because of tradition. They do not want to repent and we are not praying for them. We have to pray for them because we don't want to, we cannot force them to change their belief system on their ideology. But we have to also pray for them. Why? Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers. But we have a duty, hallelujah, to let them know this is not the way. The way is to Jesus. Glory to God. We have an obligation to our brothers and our father and mother. Glory to God. We have an obligation to tell them. Amen. One man plant, another man water. God gives the increase. Amen. In his time, in his season. But we must, hallelujah, do the Father's work. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hope, hallelujah. Amen. So, so glory to God. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. So we have a duty. We cannot go about and say, well, oh, well, you have this one, I have that one. We all in Christ. No, we're not all in Christ. Some of you in tradition, you're not in Jesus. Hallelujah. That's it. That's the case closed. Because why? If we are together, we'll have one mind. We'll have one obligation. We'll be on one purpose for Jesus. To see people save and come to the knowledge of the truth. That our society can be led by one group of people that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And the members can be multiplied together. That we can see. Hallelujah. And the world can see God in our life. Amen. Thank you Jesus. So it's one church, one faith, one baptism. I know for many people it's hard for you to hear. But it's the word of God. We need faith to believe Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we've been talking about that for during the week. And the Lord are pressing my heart to go deeper and come back a little further to, to extend the line of distinction. That this has begun a long, long time ago. It's not now. This rebellion against God's truth have been going forward. Amen. So we saw since the scribes and the Pharisees who had the law of Moses, you're talking about the Sabbath and the this and all that, they still they transgress against God all the way. And they came all today and they're still trying to do the same thing that God no longer require. They're still trying to hold this as some religious facade before Jesus. No, Jesus said receive the Holy Spirit. Repent. Repent from your religion, repent from your tradition and receive the gift of the Father which is the Holy Spirit and go out. Make disciples of all men. Hallelujah. Lay hands on the sick that they shall recover. This is what Jesus said. Glory to God. So brethren, what I'm saying to you brethren. Amen. Let us believe Jesus. We have read the word. We have read the word. We have read from the prophet. Hallelujah. Moses, he said, God saying this. When he come, listen to him. He came, he said, all power has been given to me. Just as the father said. The father said, I'm going to speak to my servant. Whatever he tell you to do, that's what you need to do. What more do we want? <laughs> Amen. The phone is quiet. We know it's a heavy conversation, but it's heavy, but we bless God. Hallelujah. Let's go further and look at the manifestation of this disobedience from man and this rebellious of the Holy One of Israel. Now, you said, he, he said, I'm going to go and I'm going to send you the comforter, right? He said that, right? Okay, good. All right. Let's turn the word of God. We go into the book of Acts. We go into the book of Acts and we're going to see how this disobedience went forward even when the church began thank you Jesus mm -hmm. hey brother Baptiste good morning to you and the family the, the wife and everybody bless God amen we bless God for Jesus thank you Lord Father amen hallelujah glory to God thank you Jesus hallelujah glory to God thank you Jesus All right, we're going to begin this thing and we're going to go back to John you know Let's go back to John to look at this thing because it's important to see this thing join up together and see everything happening in the way the Lord has prescribed it so we could really lay hold of God and his truth, that God is not a man that he should lie. He's not confusing, oh, this scripture, that scripture. No, they're all together. They say the same thing all over. Hallelujah. Da, 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 many, da, 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 truly, da, 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 da. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm looking for something here. I want to take you... I want to show you something before we go into that. Thank you so much, everybody. 
Thank you for listening. All those praying for Choice Radio and praying for me. And, you know, we thank you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, good. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm looking for something here. I know what we're going to do, but I just, I'm looking for something here. Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Okay. Let we could pick it up from um we could take something here from from John 20. John 20 then we're going to look over John 21 and we're just going to go into in the book of Acts. You there with me, brethren? I know many of you you love your Bible. You have your Bible. You love Jesus. But you've been fed so much false doctrine over the year, the years and you cannot come into your purpose for God. And God is saying, "Come on, daughter. Let's get it going for Jesus." Amen. Because remember when Jesus come He's given rewards for those who have served the king. Not for those who just claim to know the king. And the people don't, you, a lot of times we say, oh, you think people trying to talk about the church? No. Just going to a church doesn't mean you are serving God. It means you are going to a church. That's what it is. Service is going into the world, making disciples. Get, that is the, 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 the father's desire. When you engage with people in the world, the fire of God is walking with you. The gospel of Jesus is walking with you as your manner of life. Hallelujah. As a living testimony to those in darkness. This is what the Father wishes for most of all. That's why when gifts are given in heaven, he say, well done, good and faithful what? Servant. Yes. <laughs> those who have served. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. And um, John 20, John 20 and 28 hallelujah glory to god and thomas answered and said unto him my lord and my god amen my lord and my god jesus said unto him thomas because thou hast seen me thou hast believed blessed are they which have not seen and yet have believed what we find here in that text is something amazing remember nicodemus who was a ruler of the jews said we know you from jesus we from god we know it you don't have to tell us. No, Thomas, a disciple of Jesus, is expressing something from another side of the contrast. He's expressing that he's kind of worried. And Jesus said, because you see. But the point is, the, the Pharisees and the scribes, the intelligent men, they agree, we know you come from God. But we still want to do things the way we are doing it. We don't want to follow you and just do what you tell us to do. We want to do what we are comfortable doing. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Okay. Let's go to 20 and 30. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah. And that believing ye might have life through his name. Did he say through Moses? Did he say through the elders? No, through the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so let's go over to John 21. We must bring these things in context so we see that the, the, everything just join up together. Nothing is contradicting. Everything is here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, let's go to, um, to John 21. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm looking for this right here. This is not this. Okay. Okay. All right, let's take it from, from 21 and 14. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus said to, to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said unto him, Again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. 
He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Stay there with me for a minute. Stay there. Let's look at Jeremiah, the word of God in Jeremiah. And look at what he's saying about this feeding business. Look at this here. Hallelujah. And many times people are offended about this pastor thing. Oh, my pastor, man. Jesus is your pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't need to get offended and defending man. Let's defend Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Jeremiah 23, he said, Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of what? My pasture. It's not your ministry and your church. And no, no, no. It's my church. It's my church. It's not yours. It's my pasture. Period. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because we see many people are separated from the pasture of Jesus. They might be in a pasture, but not in the pasture of the Lord. They're in some congregation, some religion, some denomination, but they're not, they're not, to, we're not together. We're not together in one. People don't want to hear that, but that's the Bible, brethren. That's the Bible. And I said it before, I've seen that separation promoted in so many churches. That's what they promote. They promote that you belong to me and you belong to this church and belong to that. And so if, you, if somebody not coming here, you don't deal with them. That's what they present. They don't say it raw like that, but that's what they present. You are not of us. You are gone away from us. You understand? That's what they do. But once I'm in Jesus, I'm in his pasture. And if you're in Jesus, you are in his pasture also. Amen. He is our shepherd. Amen. So look at what Jesus said here in John 21. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young and girded thyself and walkest thou, whether thou wanderest, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch out for thy hand, and, a, and a, another shall guard thee and carry thee, whether thou wouldest not. Amen. But what he said here very clearly, he said to feed my sheep. Feed them. Feed them what? The true word of God. Feed them that they can be valuable in the kingdom of heaven. Tell them the truth about the kingdom. Feed them the real word of God that they can have liberty in Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why he said there's a war in Jeremiah. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. Therefore thus said the Lord of, of God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. So what? They have not fed them the, the raw word of God. They have not fed them the truth. So they are divided. Even if they are together, they are still divided in the pasture of Jesus. You understand? They are still confined to some group, some church, some building, some organization. But they are divided in the pasture where Jesus is the shepherd. Where we all have the same common cause as followers of Jesus. We all see Jesus together. We see souls together. We see people dying together. It's not your church and my church and his church and she church and what they... No, 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 no. That's the devil. Hallelujah. He said it three times. Feed them. Feed them the truth of the word. Feed them the right thing. Give them the right formula. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As the Bible said, the, 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 the babes, the, the sincere, they desire the sincere milk. The newborn babes in Christ, they desire the sincere milk of the word. That's why when you read the Bible, it's impossible to follow any other doctrine that is contrary from Jesus. It's impossible for any man to, 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 to confide in or to sit under or to obtain or to take in or to, 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 to pick up a doctrine that is contrary to Jesus and walk around and say that you are a follower of Jesus. It's impossible. According to God, it's impossible. It's total denial of the gospel of Jesus. That's why he tell them, feed my sheep. Feed them. Tell them the truth about the gospel. This is about souls. Hallelujah. God is interested in every soul on the earth. That they hear the truth. That he loved them so much. That he wished for them not to perish. That is why it's important that the church of Christ present a gospel that is conducive. Hallelujah. To God and the kingdom of heaven. That men can come to God. Hallelujah. And not be affected by religion. Hallelujah. We give them the raw gospel of Jesus Christ that men can come into service of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Ah.
Hallelujah. Call her your live afternoon. Praise the Lord and good afternoon to you. Bless what the name a blessing of Jesus. it is to hear the word of God today. Hallelujah. It's such a blessing. I just want you to know that I'm encouraged and I thank God for his word. And I know for those who have had ears to hear, have been enlightened. God bless you so, so much. It's a wonderful thing to hear the word of God preached, teached, and proclaimed with such simplicity and sincerity. I am so grateful to God for you. And I trust that many, many have heard the word and the message today and have been enlightened and will turn their hearts to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of their faith, and who is calling them through his precious word. What a word. Hallelujah. Continue in God's grace. The Lord bless you. God plenty. bless you. I am encouraged and I am blessed today. In Jesus' Just name. The word of God. God bless you. God bless you too. Thank you so much indeed. God bless you. Welcome back. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, caller, your next good afternoon. Praise the Lord. Praise uh, the Lord, my brother. Minister, Minister Strake, how are you? I'm doing great. We're blessing Jesus today. Amen. Amen. Well, I thank God for the teaching, man, you know, uh, uh, making it plain and simple. And, you know, what I wanted to, uh, more or less a question and a comment together is this. In the Bible, right, even before the beginning of time, we know that there were discrepancies between even people that walked with Jesus. For example, um, before Jesus, during the time, the scribes and the Pharisees, they had a different belief. One believed in the resurrection, the other one did not, right? Peter and Paul had, had, a, had an issue between how to deal with the Gentiles until God allowed a sheet to fall down with the fowl while Peter was in a trance and said to him, Peter, uh, rise, kill, and eat. And Peter said, no, from my youth up, I've not touched anything unclean. And the Lord was showing him that what he called clean, he cannot call it unclean, meaning the Gentiles. When Peter was with the, uh, the Jews, he said one thing uh, about the Gentiles, about abstaining from so on, and, and so it was said to him that, you know, the Gentiles could be circumcised from their heart, not just the outward foreskin. So from the beginning of time, we see that there were always discrepancies, even with Paul and Peter, you know, uh, uh, and, and some of the other apostles, so isn't, wouldn't that be something that has happened before the foundation <laughs> of time and may continue to be that way? No, well, it, the, what you are expressing there, even the same people that you're speaking about, because they were diligent and excited about God, even when um, Paul was killing Christians, he was killing them trying to uphold God's commandment. He thought that they were breaking God's commandment, that picking up somebody else and following Jesus and stuff like that. So he was even doing it for love, love of God. You know what I mean? So many times somebody can defend something because they, they uphold a truth that they believe is being, you know, validated, being like, um, like devalued then or, or taken down by somebody else. So in the context in which you're speaking, we can have different understanding of something. But even that understanding is not that we want to go our own way. We have that understanding based on what we have been, that have been revealed to us. Because even when you're talking about, uh, about Peter, Peter was saying that he was so faithful to God for obeying the Torah and not eating the things that is not right for them to eat according to the law of Moses. And because now he did not re understand the revelation of what God is saying, he was defending his firm stance in what God has already spoken to his prophet. So he was not trying to go with his own thing, but he was trying to uphold what he already knew was a truth of God. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I, I certainly understand. And, and so the reason why I come to that point is I had a dialogue with a Jehovah Witness, and we dialogued, and, you know, we came to the point where, you know, they would tell me that Jesus is not God, and, and he's just the Son of God, and so forth. And I said to her, I said, you know, uh, you, you do some of what the Word says, you know, go into the world and preach the gospel. You raise up your children to do that, you know, which a lot of Christians don't do, you know. But I says, um, you know, you, your heart is right, but, but there's, a, there's an essential truth that you're missing. 
And she said to me, you know, that, that she felt that I was the one that was missing the truth. And, and so pretty much she's saying to me that if I am misled by that, which I know I'm not, that that is enough to separate me from, uh, from, from eternity with the Lord because, you know, she even goes so far as to claim, well, maybe the Lord had brought you in contact with me so that you could be revealed to the, the truth. So the thing is this. The Bible says that, you know, um, uh, some are zealous for God, right? They have a form of godliness, mm -hmm. but they deny the true power thereof, right? So when you look at the Jehovah Witness, right, all of all that they do seem to be, you know, uh, okay. So it's kind of like the same thing I think in what you're saying is they have a heart. Just like you said, uh, Peter had this heart. They're zealous for what they believe is the truth. But, but they, they differ between us in the common denominator in, in limiting Jesus to just being, you know, a, a prophet or, you know, or just the Son of God alone. Now, you could answer or not, do you think, because, as you had said, they, you know, they, they were zealous, like Paul, like Peter, God is the reader of heart and the search of mind. He knows the intent of the heart. What do you think happens to a person like that in eternity? Well, for me to say what happened to them in eternity would be going against the scriptures in the sense of the word, God is the one that judge, that will judge all soul. But one thing Jesus, God is saying, in the, we should study to show ourselves approved unto God. And what you have to tell that Jehovah Witness to really prove if she or if they are the true disciples of Jesus, you just go to, 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 to Acts 1 and quote in there, Acts 1 and 8 but ye shall receive power after that Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be my witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judah and in Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth now that representation Jesus is saying my disciples this is what they're gonna come with they're not coming and tell you about no denomination they will come and want to pray for you to heal your sickness because they have received power from God. And they have received the Holy Ghost, which is the gift of the Father. So when they come with that, now they're speaking from where Jesus has said, I will give you power that you can be my witness. Now they are Jehovah's witness, but they are the witness of Jesus. Because Jesus said, I will give you power. Amen. I will pray the Father that he send you another comforter you shall receive power that you are able to go into the world and show signs and wonders because there are some people who will come to Christ because they have a sickness they have an ailment they have a problem and because you believe in God God will manifest his power through you that they ha might have a, a whatever problem and you pray for them and they are healed and then they will come to God because of that healing Amen. So what we have to understand, the criteria of coming to God has not changed. Don't care how you want to do it. That's up to you. Now, you meeting that woman and brought some questions to her. Guess what? She might say God led you to her. She don't know that you were led by God to go to her. Because if there is a contradiction, both of us need to double check our scriptures. Seek first of all God and say, Father, I met this young man today and he made some statements to me that I need to really be stronger or more assertive as to what my answer should be the next time I meet somebody in that sort of posturing what should I say to that person because Jesus said seek ye first the kingdom of God all his righteousness and everything shall be added that criteria is for every one of us if somebody question what we believe or what we profess our first duty is to say father I was attacked today about this. Somebody said this to me, and I, you know my heart is right, but how do I answer this? How do I affirm? So the same requirement for you is the same requirement for her. Go to the scriptures, seek the Holy Spirit, and ask for confirmation as to who is right and who is wrong. Amen? Amen, yes. Well, I have no wavering on my thought and belief but as you are on the subject, you know, I know that there'll be people that will encounter that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you know, um, again, ju just the last point is this. As you rightfully say, uh, God didn't want religion. But what religion is, is that, you know, it's similar to me reading a book, you reading a book, based upon where you are in life. If you are in need of healing, 
you will the, what will stand out to you is Peter at the gate of the temple, beautiful saying, silver and gold have I none. If you are a blind man, you would you would pull to that. And so that's what religion is. The Pentecost believe at the day of Pentecost, you know, the Holy Ghost fell and they spoke with Cloven Town. So so they pick up that part. The Baptists believe something else and, and, and so forth. But the thing is that I believe that would always be true all the tradition of time, but I believe, as you said, there must be a common denominator in who Jesus Christ is. And as you rightfully say, it said if it was possible, even the elect would be deceived. So you know what? You're right. If you're a Christian and you're saved and truly have the Spirit of God, God will lead you to truth Hallelujah. before you depart from this earth. Hallelujah. He does. He will. And He will lead people to you Amen. all the time. That's why the Bible says, He who have ears to hear, let him hear what 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 the spirit of the lord say so people will come to you all the time you know you might hear i you know my s miss s on the radio and different people come on the radio and they talk and they whatever you if you have s to hear you can hear god telling you something through that lady you can hear god telling you something through that person but do you want to hear yeah. it do you want to hear it that is the problem yes. because that's what we're speaking today about are you offended by the gospel of jesus there are many people quick to say i'm a catholic i'm a this are you saved are you a Christian? Amen. You understand me? You you quick to talk about what you are, but are you saved? Amen. And then now the ignorance of man, instead of listening and say, well, why would he even question my my why would he? Let, let, let me see what the Bible say. They would not go there. They will they will they will bunker down themselves in their religion and they will walk away from the conversation and go back to their life as if it's okay. When God has shown Himself through one of His servants and opened up the conversation. For man to consider what are they following. Hallelujah. But they will turn away. That's what the Bible says in James. A man look in the mirror. Look at his face. See his face. Walk away from the mirror. And forget, forget. what manner of man he yes. is. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. You, 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 are, you are definitely absolutely right, my brother. So may the Lord continue to bless Hallelujah. you. At some point in your intermission, there's a song that you play that's called Something Cinnamon. If you do get a chance, I pray that you would uh, be able to run that song. All right, my brother. God bless you. Thank you so much. Bless you. All right. Amen. Indeed. Hallelujah. Caller, you're live. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Grace and peace. Grace and peace to you. Bless the Lord. Um, I have a question. The Bible speaks about baptism. Mm -hmm. I would like to know what is baptism? How should it be done? Because as tradition, people say that you have to belong to a church in order to be baptized. Could you make that clear for me? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to only make it clear in the scriptures. Amen? Okay. So, well, bless amen. God. Thank you so much for the call today. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, bless, based on the word of God, Jesus admits had said something here in the Word of God. And we're going to take a look and see what he said and why he said it. We're going to turn to John 3 and begin this conversation concerning the baptism in the Word of God. John 3, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. John 3, hallelujah. Right. John 3, Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God is talking about being born of the water and born of the spirit. Amen. Born of the water, born of the spirit. But it's very, very clear in the word of God what Jesus is trying to tell these people. He's talking about spiritual things. We're talking about earthly things and we're talking about heavenly things. In the word of God, John 3, he said, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He was a ruler. He was not a regular man like you and I, real big man. He came, he the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God he cannot see the kingdom of God now there is two things to that seeing the kingdom of God understanding the purpose of heaven the purpose of souls being saved and understand what God is trying to achieve through man we cannot see the purpose many people might not see the purpose of talking about what I'm talking about it makes no sense to you hallelujah 
Nicodemus said unto him, For how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, surely, surely, truly, truly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh, that's where we conversation start. That which is born of flesh is flesh. Amen. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is a spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Why is that? The wind bloweth where it listeth, and though here is the song thereof, but cannot not tell whence it cometh or whether it goes so is everyone that is born of the spirit now we see here the expression of why the baptism is important the water and the spirit they both go together so being born again we are being born spiritually we are born being born spiritually we are being born internally amen we were born already but we are born spiritually amen and he said by the water and the spirit amen and, and baptizing in the water is for the remission of sins amen by the washing of the water the water the word and, and you know so it's a process and Jesus is saying that this is important now even if you and I do not see the significance of it we think it's a religious thing or whatever you think it is the point is that Jesus is saying this is what every man needs to do in this life if he have any intention to inherit eternal life in the kingdom of heaven amen so when you say how it is done how how it is done well once we, we saw that with the Ethiopian eunuch he said, see, here is water. What would hinder me to be baptized? And Peter said to him, If thou believest, thou mayest. So once a man believed that Jesus Christ died, he was buried, he rose again from the grave. Amen? He was underneath the ground. He was underneath, he was dead. Nobody cannot live under the ground. But he rose again. So because you believe in the concept of Jesus dying and raising again. Now you believe also that you are able to go under the water and come up again. You are able to die to your old self and live again with God. So the baptism is also a representation of dying. You are mocking your death. You are making an experiment to the host of heaven. You are telling Satan, look at me. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died and look at me. I'm going under this water and I'm showing you what I'm going to do. I'm going to come up from under that water. Amen. And so, I, so being baptized in terms of how you do it is just once you believe in Jesus, you go under the water and you come up. And anybody could do it for you. I don't believe it had to be by some pastor and all this kind of stuff. You believe, thou mayest. We read the scripture, we talk about Jesus died and rose again. And you believe your husband could baptize you, your wife could baptize you. Once you have done it, before the host of heaven, before God, the scripture is displayed, the word of God, I believe anybody can do it to another person. Amen? And I believe once it's done, it's done, it's registered in heaven. So I don't believe you have to keep doing it over and over. If you do it, you know you have done it with your whole heart, your mind, and your soul. You came to God. Once you have done it, I believe it is done. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I hope that answers your question for you in terms of, um, you know, that area. Let's go back to the phone. Caller, good afternoon. Grace and peace. To God the be Lord. the glory, Hallelujah. my brother. It's mm -hmm. very wonderful to be tuning in to hear the word of God being spoken. You know, I must say that I'm being fed, like God told Peter, to feed my sheep. And it opened my eyes to so much more, you know. As he was reading in John 21, where um, Jesus asked Peter if he loves me. And Peter said, you know us all things. And Jesus made sure that he asked this question not once, not twice, 
but three times, and even the first two times when he he asked Peter, he mentioned Peter by name, but then the third time he said, Peter, son of Jonas, do you love me? And after Peter said, Lord, you know all things, he said, feed my sheep. My brother, this is so deep because if you are a believer of God, you must feed your children the Word of God. And this is the problem today with many religions and many denominations. They take a little piece here and a little piece there. And God wants us to follow according to His Word. You know, this is what He has laid out for us. And this is what He's telling us. He says, go into all the world preaching and teaching the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ, you know, and he's making sure that he asks Peter that so many times so that Peter is well aware what he's asking him, and then he said, feed my sheep, because no matter what trials, no matter what circumstance, no matter who deviates from the word of God, you stay Stay asking the Holy Spirit to lead you and direct you in all truth, and that is what should be always being proceed out of your mouth when we are speaking and following the Word of God. We follow not according to the tradition of man, but we follow according to the Word of God. So it's very eye-opening. It's wonderful. I'm encouraged, and I pray God continue to nourish and strengthen you as you bring forth this Word today so that many of us who are tuning in, we are looking to the Word of God and following the scripture as God has taught his disciple and send them out there so should we be taught from um, taught the word also so God bless you and continue doing a good work I'm bless very Jesus. very encouraged and I'm learning so much more out of it bless you know God. and this is what God wants us to be fed on his word because if we and that's why he says we desire the sincere milk of Hallelujah. the word in order to you to get yes. solid food you must be fed on the milk first so that you can stand firm on it and grow strong in it in order to be fed solid food so very wonderful thank you my brother All god right. bless, bless you and jesus. keep on keeping on amen. in jesus name amen. amen amen bless jesus amen and to the young lady who have called before about the baptism something that is important if it's good for Jesus, it's good for me. Jesus said here in the word of God, Matthew 3 and, and 13, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to baptize, to be baptized of, of thee. And comest thou to me? Hear this. Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us, to fulfill all righteousness. We are doing this to fulfill what the Father has required of us. So it's not about what you think about it. If you think I'm, I'm, I'm greater than you, it makes no difference. We have to do this part of it to fulfill all righteousness. Somebody must baptize me that my Father can initiate me for his purpose. So the, pub, the Bible is saying the same way when we come into the body of Christ, we do this initiation, hallelujah, that we can fulfill all righteousness because it is required of God. Also remember when Jesus spoke to Cornelius, the, the prophet, when, spoke to Cornelius, he said, Cornelius, your prayer has come up before me. No, no, Cornelius was the leader of the Italian band. No, he's an Italian man, <laughs> you know. You know, but he 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 know God, he believe God because everybody all over the world they believe God. And God is telling him now, send men to Joppa that I will show you the way that I want you now to know me. So he sent the men, and when they came, they told him what is required of God. You understand? When they came, they said, You believe, and they told him the gospel of Jesus, and then they what? They got baptized. So Jesus, hallelujah, once he did what is required of the Father, he also passed it to his disciples. And they continue to pass it on because it's a requirement of God to do what? To fulfill all righteousness. Amen. So when we see he telling John the Baptist, you must be born of the water and the spirit. So the second part of it is to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So my brother, one of the strongest comments to speak to any Jehovah Witness is, or as a matter of fact, any religion, any people, 
Do you believe in laying hands on the sick? Do you believe in praying to see people healed? Do you believe in raising the dead? Do you believe in those things? Ones that are justifying and tell you, well, that, no, 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 no. You're not talking about scripture. Because as I gave you before, let's turn back again. Let's go back. We're going to the book of Acts, but let's go here and look at this. It's there. It's right there. All over. Jesus is saying, that's how you're going to be my disciples. You can be somebody else's disciples. Cool. You can follow somebody else. That's up to you. But to be my disciples, this is what is required of you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's that is um Acts Acts one, but Acts one and eight. But ye ye who is ye? Ye my disciples, you my followers, not them, not them. Because it, again, since Jesus was here, Jesus had problems with religious people. You understand? That's what we have to we have to understand that. Jesus was having problem with religious people from all along, period. Even if they read the Torah, and in the Torah, they read that God told Moses, I, God of heaven, I will raise up a prophet among you. And I gave you the scripture before. I gave you the scripture, Deuteronomy 18 and 15. Everybody should have those scriptures because in order to lay your case out, you must have those relative scripture to show the transition. Amen? As God continues to transition. He's not changing. He's just transitioning. Amen? The role of different people and how the dispensations are changing from the flesh to the spirit and this stuff like that. Amen? But God is not changing. He's just changing the, the, the implementation of the different things. He's not changing nothing. He's same God, same God, holy God. So what God, Jesus is saying here, look at this in Acts, very important. Every believer in Christ God is hoping that we are able to manifest his power to convict people that he is God. To be able to do miracles that people can turn to God. This generation now, you can't just tell them about Jesus without no sign and wonders in your life or living a life that is so, so straight up. You can't fool them. They tell you, come on, what God are you talking about? Why, 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 why should I go to your church? What are you talking about? Look at the way you live. That's not different from anybody else I see out there. You just joking around. You what what why should I why should I follow you? Why? What do you have or what can you manifest to make me believe in the God that you're talking about? That's why all these things are necessary for the body of Christ. Because he said in the last days he's gonna pour out the spirit. Because the devil is gonna pour out the spirit, I'm pouring out my spirit too. You want to fight? Let's fight. My children come with power. We're gonna raise the dead. We're gonna heal the sick. People are gonna know that we have we have the true living God. That is why it's important that the remnant of Jesus arise. We want to hear people arise in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against Jesus. We want to hear people rise and rebuke him. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. No politician coming on your pulpit and preach. No. This is the house of the living God. When you come here, submit to God. Glory to God. We don't want to listen to you. We come in the house of the living God. You have to listen to us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is what God is saying now for this church now to arise in this time. We are ready for war. Hallelujah. We don't have time for no false prophet and foolishness. We want to know what is the father's plan for this generation. What is the father's plan? That's why I said before, we have read it in Revelation. That Jesus is coming back for the same church he have started. He's not going to take any other church. He won them in Thessalonica. He won them here. He won them all over. He's coming for the same church he had started without spot or wrinkle. That's why every one of us must get our act together. Whatever spot, whatever wrinkle, whatever contrariness, whatever tradition that is tying up with your church, you need to repent of it and come right back to the foundation of the church that he have started. Very, very important important for the body of Christ because he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church what he's saying what I have given you what have been my stipulation no devil in hell can change it no devil in hell can stop it so wherever it's going on it's not my church that means the devil have infiltrated and brought in all this doctrine of the Nicolaitans and all this different kind of foolish all this kind of thing about first lady and all this kind of all this kind of nonsense it's not of God it's not of Jesus that's not his church. Hallelujah. So what we need to do as we look at the scriptures, 
First of all, the Holy Spirit is the common denominator for any follower of Jesus. All over the scriptures, Jesus is telling them, I must go because I have to pray the Father that he will send you a comforter. Glory to God. This is what it is. And as we see the world continue to transform itself, as men continue to find God in each other and find like, oh, I well, well, where are you from there? Where are you this? Where are you? We all want. No, 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 no. We can only be one in Jesus. We can only be one in Christ. Glory to God. We can try to find common grounds to see if we could find to do without God. Oh, let's, let's come together. All this and all that and all. No, 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 no. No, you can't come together. We, the only way we could come together is when we have one spirit, one faith, one baptism, one Jesus, one Lord. Straight is the great. Narrow is the way. The only way that we can have unity is in Christ Jesus. But as we have read before in Jeremiah 23, woe to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastures. Now, people love Jesus, but they are confined to the different religious pool, or they, they, they are confined to the religious cubicle. Oh, I'm in this church. Oh, I can't go over there. Oh, I must tell my bishop. Oh, I can't. What? Are you out of your head? Are you, which pasture are you in? Are you in Jesus' pasture or in your pastor pastor? Which one? The church must come to that place to understand that this is what Jesus is talking about. Because my people, they have one mind, they have one head, they have one faith, they have one baptism, and they have one goal, is to see this world, hallelujah, be changed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So what you and I have to find out, am I offended to find out that all these years have been proclaiming this, I'm wrong. That is what mankind need. That is what mankind need, is the capacity to acknowledge God and say, God, could you imagine a big man like me? All these 40 years I've been following this foolishness. Could you believe that? God is looking for men in these last days who are willing to admit it. Hallelujah. I've been going contrary to God. I've been going contrary to God. Hallelujah. So we saw in the scriptures, he said the scribes and Pharisees were offended by Jesus. And we saw they acknowledge, the ruler of the Jews acknowledge that we know that you are from God. So imagine people how bold faced a man could be. He say, we know, we know, we're not guessing. We know you come from God. But our tradition is more important than following you. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? And this is what we have today. Oh, I'm a Catholic. I'm a this. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. God is not forcing you to be what you want. But he called you to be born again. He called you to be born again. But are you going to allow pride to stop you from coming to Jesus? Hallelujah. Are you and am I going to allow pride, hallelujah, to stop me from coming to Jesus? Look at what Jesus said here in the book of John. Look at the big problem. Look at it right here. The biggest problem. Look at the problem with mankind. Look at, we're going to come back to Acts for a minute. But look at this here in John. Hallelujah. In the book of John. Let's look at this here. John 3. Look at what Jesus is saying. Hallelujah. John 3. Hallelujah. John 3 and what? 19. This is the condemnation. This is it. Light has come into the world. But men love darkness more than light. This is the condemnation. Nothing else is the condemnation. You know, no other problem. You know. But men just don't want to be offended. Men just cannot acknowledge, well, God, I'm wrong. Men just cannot admit, God, your way is right, my way is wrong. Brethren, we all have to pray to God to give us the capacity to say, God, I know I'm wrong. I admit it. Yes, I did it. Yes, Father. And that is between you and your God. That is between you and your Father. It's nobody's business. But just acknowledge, God, I'm not living according to your Bible. I know I say I'm a Christian. I know I say I'm a that. I'm a this. But based on my life, it doesn't line up to Scripture. And because of that, God, I come to repent before you. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? 
So as we look at the condemnation because of the light that is coming to the world and the light that came to Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, you and I have to purpose in our heart that we are not offended when the truth comes to us. When we are challenged for behaviors that is contrary to the Bible, we are willing to say, Father, my God, I can't believe I believe that for all these years. <laughs> God is hoping that we are, are willing to come there. So in the book of Acts, we see first of all, Jesus is saying, you're going to receive power. And when you receive power now, you can be my witness. Why? Because you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. You are not just speaking logos. You are speaking from the rhema. You are coming from the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. You are not just talking about scripture for scripture. I remember one time some guy, well, he's a Jehovah Witness too. But I mean, I knew him long before and then I, he got saved. So he's following the Jehovah Witness. So one day we're just reading about the scriptures and stuff like that. And he's saying, man, you know, da, 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 da. And then he, all he's trying to tell me, he's trying to find a way to, to shut me down. You know, he's trying to find a way to shut me down. I mean, we're just talking about little stuff, but he realized the more he's talking his stuff, he cannot get me to just go over to just, you know, acknowledge him with whatever they're trying to talk about. So he told me, well, the scripture said a man shouldn't have long hair. He said a man shouldn't have long hair. And I'm just saying, wow. Because he was a dread too. He, he had dreads. You know, I have those who know, you know, he know I have dreads. Amen. But he cut his hair. He cut his hair to follow the Jehovah Witness. You understand? <laughs> so he tried to find a point, something to offend me. He said, the Bible said, a man shouldn't have long hair. What do you believe? Give you a moment to just bask in the beauty of the Word of God and all the revelation that is in the Word of God. there with me seven minutes past the one o'clock we bless god for jesus and we thank you so much for tuning into choice radio so the holy spirit will lead you into all truth you understand me and there are many religious traditions that people have used and utilized over the years and they have brought it into the church and make it part of customs and different things but is it bible is it the bible's requirement is that what god wants you understand? So as I was making this little comment, this little side thing here with this young man, I met him and we were just reading about the Bible and stuff. And to see the spirit is just totally different. It was so much going on. We just some basic conversation about healing and different things. And they were trying to say, oh, this is that and that is that. And say, no, I said, no. So Jesus, he said, he's going to give us power to cast out demons and stuff. What's, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so he brought this up and said, well, the Bible say, you know, men shouldn't have long hair because he had cut his hair. So I said, quote me the scripture. 
also one day on the radio, somebody had called me on the radio. I guess they went online and they saw my picture and saw I had, had long hair and they went to try to shut me up. Like, you know, somebody listening on the radio and they're jealous, you know, you know, you know, human being. Come on, we are capable of doing this. So the person said, well, what that scripture said? First Corinthians 11. Let's go there. So I say, what's the scripture? So I went to the scripture, First Corinthians 11. And he said, um, da, 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 let me see, where, where, should, where should we take it from? He said, uh, da, 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 where should we take it from? All right, go to God. Well, okay, let's take it from, just take it from 11. We don't have to read the whole thing, but from 11, first of all, Paul is saying, be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. Amen? Now I, brethren, I, now I praise you, brethren, that he remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Amen? But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of every woman is, is God. Every, every woman is, is, the, is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Amen? Every man prophet, praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she is shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it is be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Amen. He's saying, if it be, let her be whatever. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man, but the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man. In the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all things of God. Judge in yourselves. Is it not commonly that a woman praying unto God uncovered? Do it not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Question. But if a woman have long hair, it is the glory of her. For her hair is given for her a covering. But if any man seemeth to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither in the churches of God. So Paul is saying, first of all, in number one, eleven, and he said, "Be ye followers of me, even if as I'm, even as I'm a follower of Christ." And in the conclusion, he's saying, in sixteen, we have no such customs. Amen. If any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom even in the church of God. Amen? So Paul is saying all these contentions and carry on and all this argument about who should do this and who is doing that, we have no such customs in the church of Jesus. Amen? Let's read 17. Now in this I that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear there'll be division among you. And I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When ye come together therefore into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating every man take it before the other. So Paul is making some, some you know, comments as to the things that is going on in the church that is creating division and creating contention because everybody have these different customs that they take from all over the place and they bring it into the church of Jesus. And he's saying we have no such custom. Let's read it, 16. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither in the churches of God. <laughs> Amen. So I, I, I said keep reading the scripture. So when he read that part, I don't know what he's, he just shut up. But I don't know how he took the scripture. Because Paul is saying there from 11, be followers of me, even if I'm as a follower of Christ. Amen. And look at he's saying here in 17, now in this I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. 
Amen. So all this is different arguments that people are arguing who here is this and who shape the hair and who do this and who do that and who doing this and we should do it that way and whatever. He said, we have no such customs. Amen. We have no such customs, neither in the churches of God. That's not our custom. We don't have this kind of custom. Wherever you get it from, wherever you pick it up, this is not our customs. Amen. But however, to an individual, if he feel comfortable that way, Amen. Or you feel comfortable that way. Okay. Let the man feel comfortable. Once his heart is right with God, leave the man alone. If that's the way he feel comfortable, hey, bless the Lord. All is to God. Amen. All right. So the phone is still open, 347-663-8638. But we're going to come back to the book of Acts because this year is the major, major, major. My brother and Baptist, Minister Baptist, bless God for you. And this is the big, this is the biggie. This is the biggie about the whole problem. Jesus said the comforter is going to come. This is the gift of the Father. This is the gift of the Father. A matter of fact, the word of God said that the law came to Moses, but grace and truth came to Jesus. What is truth? In the beginning when God created man, man never had no law. God used to visit man in the cool of the day. Man never had no commandment was just God and man living together in the beauty. But after man disobeyed God, man fell. He lost that receptacle. He lost that Holy Spirit. So he felt guilty. He covered up himself. He felt naked after he lied to God. So Jesus came to bring back that connection, to reconnect man to know God in a spiritual way. That's what truth is. So that's the truth. So what everybody need is the Holy Spirit. And once we all have the Holy Spirit, then you and I will be able to see the scriptures the same exact way. And you and I will have the same desire for Jesus. There are some people who call the radio, they have the same desire. They will support this ministry because they understand this is the word of God. There are some people you have to coax them, you have to beg them, you have to do all kinds of things just for them to see that this is the word of God. But yet for all they say they love Jesus. They in the cry. You understand? So there is a different spirits that are out there. The Bible says many spirits have gone out into the world. That's why we have to test the spirit and see if it's of the Lord. If it's of the Lord. Is your spirit of Jesus? How you know? How you know? You know, so let's go back to this in the book of Acts again, my brethren. We bless God for each and every one of you today. Thank you so much for listening and we thank God for you. And we just pray that you believe God and you want to be in the service of the Lord. You want to come off a religion and tradition and you want to be born again in the name of Jesus. Be born again and start following Jesus according to the Bible. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you know that scripture here also in Romans is making a very strong, strong statement here concerning serving God but not according to knowledge. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. So we all could be serving God but not according to the knowledge. You understand? And we need the knowledge of God. We need the truth of Jesus. And Jesus told us what is required of God. That we must be born again. And then we believe, you know, we start following God. After we are born again, then we are led by the Spirit. Amen? So when you are born, then you are led by the Spirit. You understand? So you're born of the Spirit, then you are led by the Spirit. Amen? You're not led by religion or denomination. You are led by the Spirit of God. So that's what God is hoping that he's able to, to, to lead us by his Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, we need it if we have to be led by it. You see what I'm saying? We cannot say we have it and we are not led by it. That's why some of us, the scriptures is so confusing for us. When it's not, it's saying the same thing all over. So look what it's saying in Romans, Romans 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. I mean, this is strong. This is some strong stuff. If the apostle is saying that my desire to God my heart's desire is that Israel should be saved. 
You see, somebody might turn around and say, well, I, I, he say that, but I mean, he's really, you know, the man of God and the child of God. No. He's saying that they're not saved. Even if you see them and you say, well, I guess they know God. No. He is saying that they're not saved. Let's look at it. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They love God. They claim to know God. They have a zeal. They have a desire. But not according to knowledge. Amen? Not according to knowledge. For, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, them being ignorant of God's righteousness, amen, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Amen? So many have gone out and put ashes on their forehead and go in some little boot and speaking to some priests and all that. They might have a zeal for God, but not according to God's righteousness. Not according to Bible. Not according to Jesus. The problem is now, are they willing to repent? After they have read the scripture, are they willing to repent? This would be the biggie. This would be the biggie in the last dispensation. That would be the biggie. Because so in the beginning, so it shall be in the end. This biggest problem for man was to acknowledge Jesus as Lord, repent and turn to Jesus. In the same last days, as God unfold the scripture, and God unveil the scripture as prophesied in Daniel 12 and 4, men will be so proud, they will not want to let go their religion. They would not want to put on the denomination. They would not want to be stripped from the top and begin all over with Jesus to find their place in heaven. And every one of us have to have a desire. God, I'm willing to repent. God, as you unveil these things, my eye was blinded. I want to repent. There is no other way that I have to say it on Choice Radio because that is how the Lord has put these things in my spirit. Hallelujah. You must say, God, I'm willing to repent. I'm not ashamed of all the mockery I made with your name. I'm not ashamed of the foolishness I used to do believing I was doing it for you. I'm not ashamed of all the money I lose following false prophets and profited me nothing. But now today, God, I repent before you and I want to start a clean walk with you. I'm not ashamed. I am not ashamed. This is a question every man will have to answer. Amen? Am I offended at Jesus? Is Jesus asking too much of me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's turn back to the book of Acts. And we're going to look at something here before we close down this segment. I want to thank you so much for listening. And those of you excited about Jesus and the word of God is right before you. Right there before you. Clean and clear. Hallelujah. Good. Glory to God. We're going to read the book of Acts from 1. Let's read it from 1. And let's try to see if we could paint a picture. All the Bible believers, you love the word of Jesus. Hallelujah. The more you feed on the word of God, it fools you up in a way I cannot tell you. I don't know how to tell you. Hallelujah. Glory to the God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he says, good afternoon. Bless Jesus. Good afternoon to your husband and all the family of God. Let's read the book of Acts. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that, he threw, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments. Very important. Because even John Jesus was here, he said there were things that I would say to you, but I can't tell you now. Because the point is, if I tell you now, you won't be able to make sense out of it. Those things are way, way in the distant future. That's why this corresponds to Daniel 12 and 4. Daniel, seal the book until the time of the end. Men shall run to and fro, knowledge shall be increased. So God is not a man that he should lie in the mouth of two or three witness. Every word is being established. He said, until the day he was taken up after that, he threw 
the Holy Ghost had given commandments. Amen. Unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Very, very important scripture. You need to underline this in your Bible. Because there is a way that seems right unto a man. In the end thereof is the ways of death. Jesus is speaking pertaining to key things concerning the kingdom of heaven. Very important to understand. Because you might be a part of religion denomination. But is it pertaining to the kingdom of heaven? It might be pertaining to religion. It might be pertaining to denomination. It might be pertaining to a tradition. But is it pertaining to the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And being assembled, 4 and 1 and 4, Acts 4, 1 and 4, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. Wait for what? The promise of the Father. The promise of the Father, which he saith, which saith he, he have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Hallelujah. So the promise that he's speaking about and everything concerning the word of God is together. John came with the water. Now the spirit is going to come. Man must be born again of the water and of the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye, ye, shall be my witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judah and in all Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Very important. So to go out and preach the gospel, we must be filled with the Holy Spirit. We must have the Holy Spirit because he will lead us into all truth. He will empower us to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which said unto them, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you unto heaven, shall so come in like manner as he had seen him go into heaven. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the Mount of Olive, Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into the upper room where they abode both Peter and John James and John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, Zelotes, and, and Judas, the, the brother of James. These all continued in what one accord? In prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Well, again, if Mary, the mother of Jesus, is there waiting for the same Holy Spirit, why should you pray to her? Why would you pray to Mary? Mary's looking for the same thing that they're looking for. She's the mother, but she's there praying, waiting for the Holy Ghost. Let's read it. And in one accord with supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Amen. And in those days, Peter stood in the midst of the, the disciples and said that the number of names together were about 
and hundred and twenty men and brethren. This scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judah, Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we could leave that here for a minute and go over to Acts number 2 because it's very important we see the scriptures joining on together and saying the same thing over and over. You know, sometimes people want to say, oh, that Bible says this, the scriptures say, but where does it fit in? How does it add up? Is it contradicting Jesus or is it exalting Jesus? Hallelujah. And the word of God must exalt the king because he is truth and what he has told us is truth. Amen. So we see in Acts 2, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, I want to show you something. We must read this. I'm going to show you something concerning this religion, denomination, and concerning this. I'm going to show you something in the word of God. We're going to show you something concerning all this religion and denomination and all this stuff that is contrary to God. Hallelujah. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a song from heaven as a rush of mighty wind, and it filled the house which way they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jer Jerusalem Jews, amen, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Very important. Hallelujah. Now when, they were, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Amen. Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying, One to another, behold, are not all these which be Galileans, and now hear we them, sorry, every man in his own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes, Emelites and dwellers of Mesopotamia, and, 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 and Judah and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and parts of Libya and Cyrene and strangers of Rome and Jews and here, yeah, strangers of Rome. All these things are here in the Bible. So we could know that people had an option to follow Jesus or follow the traditions of those locations, of those places. They had the gospel. They heard the truth. But many continue in their old doctrine and their old traditions. Let's read. Rome, Jews, and proselyte Cretes, Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongue the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were, were in, in doubt, saying one to another, What mean is this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing in the midst of the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judah and all that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as he supposed, seeing it be the third hour of the day. Another revelation here that we have to see before I go into this. The men who said that they were drunk, God did not give them the revelation because they were non-believers. They, they were mocking. They did not believe. But every other man were confounded because they were devout men from all over the world who is looking for God, searching for God, and they came to Jerusalem looking for God. But so because their intention was right, they were confounded because they heard them speak the wonderful works of God. So the men who thought they were mad and they were drunk, they were not hearing what they were saying. They were not getting the revelation. So they thought they were drunk. If they knew they were saying things that made sense, they would not think they were drunk because they knew that they were preachers. Hallelujah. So that's important here for us to see in 15. Let's go 15 again. For these are not drunken as he supposed, seeing it be but the third hour of the day. But this is that, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, 
saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on your servants and on my on my handmaids, on my servants and my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I shall show wonders in heavens above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor and smoke the sun shall be turned into 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 darkness we're going to go forward here you could read the whole thing but we want to get to a point to look at something here now when we go over here hallelujah in the same acts 2 hallelujah acts 2 and 36 we're going to pick it up there Therefore, let the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus, that same Jesus, the same prophet he had promised to send from Deuteronomy. We read it before Deuteronomy 18, 15. Here is the manifestation. Therefore, let the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus whom he had crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in the heart. Are you pricked in your heart? Are you pricked in your heart by the word of God? Are we pricked when God said, No, you cannot live like this and serve me. Are you pricked? Are you pricked? Are you offended? They were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sins. And what? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and all that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Why would he say that? Why would he say that? Let's see why. Then they that gladly received the word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Hallelujah. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, a new doctrine, and a fellowship, a new fellowship. Amen? And in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Hallelujah. But what we saw here, they that gladly received, they that gladly received. And we saw before that he spoke about this untoward generation that rebellious people save yourself from them if God has spoken to your heart repent receive the gift and join the church of Jesus hallelujah so we saw that rebellion had not just begun it was long time ago and men continue to rebel and transgress against the will of our father which is in heaven let this not be your portion today in the name of Jesus as you listen to the word of God. And as you go forward in the word of God, you will realize that everything that Jesus had encountered with hypocrisy and hypocritical people continue even today as we live. That's why every man has to study to show himself approved unto God. Workmen that need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of God. To whom much is given, much more is required. You who have a Bible and you who have a smartphone and you can Google to see what I'm saying if it's true, you have no excuse to God to say, well, that's what you learned from your father. That's what your grandmother did. Oh yeah. They never had no cell phone. They never had no Google. I am going to judge them according to what they had. You! It's a different thing for you. You have too much information now to come before the living God and say, well, you didn't know. No, we all 
have to know. And we all should want to know. Hallelujah. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. It's the power of God unto salvation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word and we pray that you will seal this in the hearts of your people. That we all can come together in the unity of the faith. Have one heart, one mind. Hallelujah. To preach the gospel of truth that men in darkness may see your marvelous light and run unto you that we might be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. That we might have hope in the resurrection. That we might have the assurance. Hallelujah. To be raised from the grave, Father. We thank you for all your people. We thank you for every pastor, every minister, every bishop. every. We thank you for us, God. We pray, God, that you give us the strength to repent for all that is contrary to the gospel of Jesus. That we are going to make it. That you will say, well done, good and faithful servant. You are not ashamed of me. You are not ashamed to admit you are wrong. So welcome into my rest. Amen. So we bless Jesus for each and every one of you today. So, you know, we brought this to you. Because as we look at the tradition of men continue to go forth as if it's some stable source of God. And men continue to walk in darkness. It's important for us to make up our minds. We want to follow Jesus. We want to see Jesus according to the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to take a few more calls if you order oh, something else on your mind this morning. Something you want to say, something you want to share this morning. We bless God for each and every one. Amen. <music> Hallelujah. 347-663-8638. And something very important for us as followers of Jesus to understand. Many things that we have been doing, we learned it from somebody else. Amen. Nothing wrong with that. Amen. So we're not blaming people or criticizing people. But we must, must purpose in our heart to change and come into the light of God as we continue to walk forward. Amen. Because he has promised to lead us. Amen. So if he's leading us, we must be willing to follow. Amen. By the Holy Ghost. We bless God for Jesus. Call a good afternoon. Good afternoon. Grace and peace. Grace and peace unto you. Yeah, thank you for your words today. Thank you for the knowledge. Bless Jesus. Thank you for the knowledge. Thank you for the wisdom. And thank you for the um the be the be obedience of 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 the word, you know. Thank you for showing us the way, you know, because you said we have to be born again. You understand? We can confess with our mouth, yes. The Lord that Jesus Christ I know, I confess with my mouth that Lord Jesus Christ came for me because I am a sinner. You understand me? And I fall short of your glory, you know. But I thank you for teaching me, for sending the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is saying, I always say, the Holy Ghost will always teach you, you know what I mean? But, um, but a striker. And I thank you for you because you are open my eyes, you are open my knowledge more. You know, I say, like, yes, so God said, sometimes we want to fight our battle, but God said the battle belongs to Him, you know? And I thank you for sending Jesus because Jesus is the true. He, you know, Hallelujah. he came with grace, and he came, he came with grace and truth, and that's the only person we got to follow. And in this time now, you understand me? The tradition and the custom that we have, you know, that we grow up with, with parents that they taught us, you know. But who taught us more? Who teach us more? Is the Holy Ghost that teaches us the truth? You understand me? And I thank you for life. I thank you for you because I get to meet you on uh, this radio station. Is I know is is blessed people out there. So people. People, people are stubborn, you know, so I said people love darkness more than light because their deeds is evil, you know, and when their deeds is evil, they don't want to come out, so they don't want to come out into the light, but by the time God, you know, me, I don't scare to come out, I have to come out <laughs> in the light, I was, I'm in the darkness, <laughs> but I always ask God, whatever the darkness, what I have in me, that you, you must bring it to light because everything must come to light, Bless and you. I thank you for this day. I love you here. God said, you know, in the custom and tradition, we don't follow. We follow Jesus Christ. Of course. You understand me? Amen. And Jesus Christ is the one that came for us. Back in the days, that was God, but Jesus came to save us. And Amen. I thank you. I thank you for this program. Really, from the bottom of my heart, I, you know, I have difficult in life, yes. But God, you know, God giving me the strength because yes. I told him. I am mm. nothing. Hallelujah. But I thank you for life, you know. Bless God. And bless you, bless you. Continue go, doing the good work of God, you know. Amen. Go there, son. Because God said we have to go out there, son, look for them. Exactly, say, exactly. Each. Exactly. Every one of us. Amen. 
understand? He said, right. don't worry about the 99 and all, but the last one, mm. the more concern, you know? Definitely. Amen. God, right. bless you, God bless you. Bless your wife Amen. and every you know, best radio station. No weapon shall form against that, this radio station in Jesus' name because I already cover in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray. Bless God. Thank Amen. you so much. God Be encouraged. You. Amen. And I want you to keep praying for me too, you know, because I need the prayer too. I need, you know? Jesus Christ is with us. Let's just bless him right now. Father, we just thank you for your daughter. She's always outreaching and, you know, just looking on to you, Father. We pray that the peace that passes all understanding rest and abide with her, God. That she has confirmation yeah. that you have heard her supplication and you are there with her, Father. So she don't need to worry. She don't need to worry. Just be led by you as she move into newer, newer revelation that you are able to unveil yourself in her life that she can know for sure that you are there with her, Father. Amen? In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Bless God, my beloved. Amen. Amen. Glory Thank to you. God. You're welcome. Bye -bye. Amen. We want to see him this afternoon. Don't forget at 3 o'clock, Pastor Ferdinand taking your calls. The first Saturday of the month. Take the time out. Give us a call this afternoon if you're out there, something you want to share this morning, but we, this afternoon, but we really just want to encourage you that to have that heart to say, God, I was wrong, or we had it wrong, or we're doing it wrong. We're not ashamed to do it right. As you open our eyes, 347 Hey, call her your life. Good morning. Good afternoon. God bless, God bless you, Pastor Stricker. This is Sister Bailey. God bless you. You know, um, you're doing such a great work. Great work. Good teaching. Bless you Jesus. know, the Bible says the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. And he said, go into all the world and teach the nation, you know. And and I was saying to myself, you need to go on the television and just go into Joel Osteen Church one day and give them some of these words. You know, you need to hit those big congregations like CC and give them some of these good words. Because you know, notice some of these big congregations, they're not getting the teaching. And like you say, you know, they believe what they hear and they think is the right thing. But it's not really the right thing. So, you know, you need to be exposed to some of those big church. Let, let them know the word. Because everybody watch television, but a lot of people might not be aware of Choice Radio. But God bless you and keep up your good work. God bless you. Thank you for the call. Thank you for the encouragement indeed. And we who believe in the word of God, we have a duty to God to support the things of God. That's the way it works. We on Choice Radio, we don't beg and talk about this and talk about that. But God say, by the fruit we're going to know. If you believe in this ministry, then you will just do what is right to see this ministry be able to leap, leap and bongs and go whatever. God understand. Yeah, amen. And even for, for religion to people feel, well, okay, well, I got to put my money in the church. No, you put your money in the things of the Lord. You invest in, in God's word that it can go further. That's God's ministry is the word of God. Amen. So that's important for people to understand because many times people have that religious posture. Oh, I'm a listening station. I know it's better the word of God, but I'm going to put my money in the church. But nothing goes out. Nothing happens from there. I'm not saying that happens with every church because I know some church do a lot of stuff and have a lot of outreach to reach the people. But there are many churches that have no outreach, zero. Everything just go right there, right there. Just nothing going out. Nobody coming in. No new followers. No new converts. Nobody. And year after year we go and we think that God is going to bless that. No. God is going to bless what is going out. Amen. God is going to bless what is going out. That brings back a reward. Amen. That brings the fruit in. Bringing the harvest to the kingdom. Amen. But the phone is open. 347-663-8638. As we're talking about tradition and, you know, religion and denomination and all this stuff like that. And we have to keep praying for our brothers, praying for our grandmothers, praying for our sisters and asking God for strategies or asking God for scriptures or asking God for input that you can spark the imagination that they can know they are wrong. Caller, good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. God bless you. Turn off your radio. Turn off your radio. Yeah, it's better. 
Yes, it's better. Mm -hmm. In your early introduction, um, I was listening. Um, you mentioned something about a uh, pastor's wife wrote a book in, uh, in, on her past experience. But you, you didn't really, really come clear on that. And I want to know the book that she wrote, if it was based on her experience in her life, in her spiritual life, that she was this kind of uh, person in the world, and she came out of the world, and she decided to tell people what she experienced so they could have a better understanding towards the way of life. Or she just used that as a gateway to sell her book to get money. I don't know if it was on a spiritual basis or if it's on a commercial basis. Now I was I was condemning that. I was unequivocally yeah. I was unequivocally condemning that foolishness. Because she's saying she saved single and you know looking for sex or whatever kind of stuff, kind of language like that. And so women should come and hear how it is that she's single, she's saved, and she's looking for sex or whatever, something like that. And everybody's sharing around this information for women to come and listen to how a woman of God, she saved, she was married to a pastor, and she got divorced, now she's out there, and she, you know, she pick up again, and she writing books, and she's bestseller all over the place, and everybody running after her, and she want to teach women how they can be in Christ and be looking for sex. You know, so I was just totally rebuking this in the name of Jesus. This has nothing to do with God. Hallelujah. Glory right, so, to God. So, so she's not a Christian anymore. No, 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 no. I'm saying this is my, this is just me. That might be you. Probably you, you won that book. Probably you're interested in that kind of conversation. I'm saying no, from no, no, me. No, 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 no. I just want to clarify <laughs> because there is, there is other churches I've been to and you find a pastor writing books. The daughter of the pastor writing book, the pastor's wife writing book, and teaching, telling people of the way how to live their life or their experience. Some of them don't have no experience in certain bad um, aspects in life, but they could teach you about it. Some of them want to be counselors, and they need counseling for themselves, and they know nothing about counseling. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Amen. So I was just trying, trying right. to get, at, uh, uh, get, me, get it get Clarify. straight. Because, yes. Mm -hmm. you know? I understand. I'm being sarcastic yes. with you, too. You know I know your voice. Um, um, you know you know I know your voice. So I'm just giving you a hard time. You know that, right? Well, all I would know we have to be aware of that too because it's true. There is, I just I don't, I don't want to read no book telling me how to understand the Bible. I have to read the Bible to understand the Bible. I don't want people writing books and tell me how to understand the Bible and write it, taking chapter out of the Bible and write the book. I find that is that is nonsense. It is you know? nonsense. That is, yes. The yeah. Holy Spirit will answer the Bible for you. Amen? Amen. God bless you, my brother, indeed. Thank you Great. so much. Amen. So, yeah, as the young man was saying, that's the kind of perversion that we see out there with God's holy word. You understand me? Some woman want to tell you, oh, how you could, oh, you, well, you, you're a child of God, but you know, you still have your way and you're thinking about this and God want this for you and all kind of that. That's foolishness. You hear me? Foolishness. Unequivocally. Foolishness. Nothing to do with God. She's saved and she's out there and she's single and she's looking for this and, and people want to run after that and you yeah, come on. That's nothing to do with Jesus. Tell her to call this radio. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have a holy calling, brethren. Hallelujah. Those things is the least. Man or woman is the least. When you come to Jesus, you have no desire for all this stuff. Amen. And I'm a married man and the desire I had before is totally different. And nothing wrong with me and my wife. We're good. Amen. And sometimes God wants to cut this foolishness off that you can focus on eternity. Hallelujah. So for any woman to tell you or to try to give you some book for you to read, to go lusting after man and thinking all kind of stuff and think it's okay, this is the devil. Period. Glory to God. That's complete devil. Period. Amen. And there are some churches that like that kind of foolishness. Oh, some person come with a book. Oh, yeah. Well, welcome this person. Big seller coming in. And everybody loves to hear that. They want to hear the gossip. And come in and have all your wives come and sit down in a circle and let's talk about this. Foolishness. Hallelujah. Then you want to go home and disrespect your husband and say all kind of stuff and do all kind of stuff. This is the devil. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And Paul spoke about that. He said, for a time, you come back. That the devil don't tempt you for your incontinency. Hallelujah. And the devil will tempt you for your incontinency. Glory to God. We give praise to God today. Amen. Call out. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Minister. Bless the Lord Jesus. 
Um, my next thing I want to ask question: How long do you give your life to God? Uh, How long now? Uh, about about six years, I think. About six years, right? My God! Uh, about six my years. My God! Yeah. There is nothing God can do. He's Lord. Um, what I want to say is that there's a lot of pastors out there, bishops, minister. They call themselves all kind of names. For years, though, they preaching the word of God, and I'm telling you, Minister, you have the anointing from God on you. You 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 couldn't put it much better than the way you you, you make it. You put it for the dumb, the blind, the dumb, the dunce. Anybody could understand the word of God, and I pray God that He will continue to show you with His love. And with his blessing and give you more every day that you could give us and other people who don't know him will come to know him. May the Lord bless you and keep you and guide you. You put in a lot of pastors and them out there to shame. My no, God. No, you, you know, I mean, I don't want to try to be prideful, but you know what happened? Let's consider this, right? To whom much is given, much is required, right? And there are many people who as much as they come into the things of God, they are not doing it God's way. God say, I am your savior. I am your Lord. You seek me. Amen. So sometimes people feel they have to seek other people because they feel they they whatever to let them teach them. No, Jesus say, I am the teacher. The Holy Spirit that you receive shall lead you into all truths. Amen. All truth. So when we Amen. don't do that, we fall contrary to the requirement of Jesus. We might do it, reluctantly not you really want to do it because you give men credit you look on to them and then you submit your will to their will hoping that they're teaching you mm -hmm. the truth so some of them might be overtaken by devils and they teach you doctrines of devils not that they intentionally teach you doctrines of devils but if they're not following jesus as the head then they go aside with their own doctrine and you following them too but jesus is mm -hmm. saying you come to me i am your father I am Jesus. I am the teacher. You come to me. I lead you into all truth. And I will tell you a truth. People might not want to believe that. When you get born again, you are born again. Yes, anybody can tell you about Jesus and you can hear the gospel and be born again. But when you get born again, you have to begin your walk with Jesus. Because Jesus could use anybody. Any old piece of wicked, bad church. You could hear the right thing in there and your intention is right. God can use that person to get you initiated into the kingdom. But when you come into the kingdom, you have to start following Jesus. Because you might come there and God say, that's not for you. I receive you here, but move on. Follow me. But some people, they feel obligated that when they come to God, they have to stay where they came to God. No. No, you never stay there. Amen. The Ethiopian no. eunuch was it, baptized it, 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 it was so, on his way to it Ethiopia. Was so right now, I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been educated with the word right now. If I stay, if was so, I wouldn't be educated with the word right now. My God, you don't know how much you do and how much you uh, get from you from the short time I was listening. I'm listening to you, Minister. You don't know how much I learned from you for the years I yes, stayed in my church. I Hallelujah. learned nothing. Hallelujah. Because they preach two scripture from the Bible and the rest is just money and give me this and do this and the church want that and the church want this. And you're giving them, you tithe, you offer and they ask for. And if the church wants something fixed, they're still collecting money to fix that. Where the money from the, the offering and the tithe go? What you doing with that money? Mm -hmm. Well, again, with That's what... all I know. Right, but with what you're saying, let us look at obedience and disobedience. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Once you are sitting there and your spirit are being upset by foolishness, you know that that is not your father. You rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Then now you need the boldness of God to say, pastor, bishop, whoever, let me say this. I came here today to serve the Lord. And what is going on here is totally not of God. Is either you give me some scriptural representation of what you're talking about or tell me why is my spirit so troubled by what you're doing. We have an obligation to our Father in heaven and to our brothers who are taken over by demonic forces. And many times people feel that sitting there as a hypocrite, complaining about the church and not talking about it, you feel you're doing something for God. No, you are hypocrite. 
You are hypocrite said, because you are sitting in I the midst of them and you're thing. making them believe that what they're doing is right. And you are hypocrite. And I, I know many people, they are hypocrite. They complain, oh, they, 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 they. but they're sitting right there every week. You are hypocrite. You are a backstabber. You are a wicked, wicked person to sit there and see your brother mm. going to hell with his contradiction to the scripture of God. And you sit there and feel that God will tell you, well done, faithful servant. No, he's going to tell you, you a hypocrite. You a hypocrite because according to, according to Galatians 6, he said, you and I, we are our brother's keeper. And if we see a man is overtaken in a fault, you have a duty to say, oh God, you are going against this scripture. My spirit is troubled with what you guys are doing here. And woe unto you if you don't repent. Is either they hear or they forbear. But you have done your part with God. Now you can walk out and say, God, I've done it. I've done it because I know it does not represent what I see in the scriptures. I know it does not represent the book of Acts. I know it does not represent the spirit of Jesus who came to save men that is living in sin. So because of that, I'm walking away from here. Knowing that you, God, is the one that I'm seeking. Let me tell you something. God will let you know, daughter... I am pleased that you didn't stand for that foolishness. I am pleased with you that you shut down that foolishness of the devil of what he was trying to do with my children. A matter of fact, you were able to help them save their souls. Amen? Amen. And what this is saying I, I, here, this, I'm not, well, let, let me say this. I am not condemning a person just on the surface. The love of money is the root of all evil. Once money and popularity and fame becomes important in people's life and people start to look to it, get ready. The devil is going to find a way to come in and take over your service, take over the influence, take over the things of God. And all of a sudden, this thing is no more about Jesus. It's about this man of God and that man of God and this powerful woman and this and, and all after that, the whole thing is no longer about Jesus. Jesus and all kind of chaos and confusion happen. Now what I'm saying to you, it doesn't mean that person started like that. It doesn't mean that was the intention. It doesn't mean the person is a bad person. I'm not talking against the pastor. But because the scriptures say he can be overtaken in a fault, we have a duty as we guard the word of God to say, Bishop, let me say this to you, man of God. When could I speak to you? Are you available tomorrow? When could I call you? Well, well, no, I want to talk to you. And you say, Bishop, let me say this to you. With all due respect, that kind of foolishness that you have going on in the house of the Lord, this is not of God. And I have a duty to tell you. That's how I feel about that's what's going on. I'm troubled by what I've seen going on here. We have a duty to God to help our brothers and sisters who have fallen from the faith and is falling away from the precept of God. Hallelujah, we have a duty. The same way you listen to me, if you realize I start going away, you have to call and say, brother, you know, I mean, I listened to you for a while and my spirit is so troubled. I heard you mention this scripture and you said this. Could you confirm it with me? Could you explain a little further so I could really hear exactly what you're trying to say? So as the young man called just now and said, well, I heard you mention about the lady with the book. Could you let me know if you were endorsing it or if you were talking a way that saying that is kind of contrary and I was able to articulate or explain further as to really what I was trying to say. What God is saying, we as men, it is, Im it is not impossible that the devil can take us over because we are in the flesh. And once we are in the flesh, the devil can always try to seduce us and get us to make the thing that is not important, important, and the thing that is important, make it unimportant. You understand me? Yeah. And then the whole service is changed, the whole thing is changed, and everybody just going helter-skelter all over the place. But what God is saying, those who are spiritual, those who still have the eyes to see through the realm of the spirit, he have a duty to his brother, or to your children, or to your wife, to say, you know, daughter, could I speak to you today? You know, that kind of behavior you're getting on with, I don't know what happened with you. Could you talk to me and tell me why is it that you're talking what you're talking? And they say, well, you know, dad, you know, this happened. Okay, daughter, let's pray about it. Or let's thank Jesus. Well, God is hoping that we don't be hypocritical. So many people are hypocrites. They, every day they complain about their past, about the yet for all they're going and sit there every week. You a hypocrite. You a hypocrite. That's what you are. You a hypocrite. That's hypocritical people. 
hypocrites hallelujah mm. god wants us to speak up tell the people they don't want to stand you you dust your feet and you walk away case closed you don't want to hear go ahead i know my intention is not wrong i'm not trying to disrupt your church i'm not trying to break up your church i'm not trying to discredit you i'm just saying what i'm seeing here is not representing the scripture and it does not my spirit don't feel right about it i don't know why maybe you have to pray for me maybe i need to be prayed for but i'm being honest as to what i see does not represent the bible amen amen we just bless god my sister we bless the king amen, amen. hallelujah god bless you be encouraged in the lord hallelujah bless god all right so we take one or two more calls before we shut down this segment but i hope you understand what i'm saying and well, we are not talking against we are talking for jesus we are talking for the lord he came to save all hallelujah glory to god and we must make it conducive for men to be saved the truth set men free and only the true gospel of jesus will bring men to a knowledge of god that they are willing to walk in the beauty of holiness and walk before a true and living God that we can be saved. So we all have a duty not to be a hypocrite. You understand? Oh yeah, I love the program. Yeah, they, they, They're not going to give you a dollar. They won't tell you. No, I'm just drawing a reference. All is a form of hypocrisy. It's a form of hypocrisy. That's what we do. But God is saying, let's get it right. Let's be truthful. Let's be honest. Let's be real. Call your life. Good afternoon. Yes, Pastor Stricker. I must thank God for you. Bless Jesus. I go to church, but I've never searched the scripture, as, uh, you know, until I start listening to you. You have been an inspiration in my life, and I thank God for you and your family. Keep up the good work through Bless Christ. Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank Hallelujah. you. Bless him. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Thank, yes, yes. Thank bless you, Jesus. Jesus. Wherever Thank you, you are, Jesus. bless Jesus. He's the one that leads you into all truth. And we just stumble on um, John 10. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that cometh into the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Amen. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Leadeth them out. Amen. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Amen. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of the strangers. The scripture is telling you very clearly. What does not represent the kingdom of heaven? We cannot follow it blindly. Period. I don't care who it is. Amen? You don't care who it is. I don't care. They could call you man of God. They could call you doctor. I don't care. You're not my doctor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen? And that's not being disrespectful. You are being respectful to your father in heaven. He is your God. And God didn't send no man to fool you around like if you don't know what you don't have a head. And many of you out there, you are educated, you come from good school, your parents ready, right, and some kind of little stupid man come from somewhere and have you foolish. Every week you take all your money and put it in there and all kind of stupidness, you, you're walking around and you think you're making sense. How you could be making sense? How you could be making sense? To whom much is given, much is required. If God give you a brain and God give you, you're supposed to use it to the glory of God. Let God know I'm not stupid. I'm not a fool. I know that's not Bible. I don't care what prophet they call you. I don't care. I don't care. I know that's not Bible. When you do that, God is pleased. God say, look at my little daughter. Oh, look at my son. Look at him. Look, 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 look. Look at him. <laughs> God is pleased, brethren. When we stand for the word of God, even if you are in error, but your intention is right, God is pleased. It's a beautiful development when we can challenge the status quo of religion and Christianity and whatever it is. It's a beautiful thing. The kingdom of God has never advanced without, without men and women who are willing to say, uh-uh, we're going to test this thing out and see if this is God. We're going to challenge that. Mm -mm. We're going to challenge that. Pastor, I will challenge you today. I will challenge you today. Go to God. That's why we open the phone. You get your bishop to call. You get your prophet to call. You will get him to call and let me talk to him. You call and let me talk to him. 
You let him call and let him talk, make me talk to him. I'm not afraid to talk to him. I'm not afraid of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation to all that believe. Every one of all you. You might be listening to me, you feel you don't know. You are more than a conqueror through Christ. People looking down on you and feel you don't know. You more than every. You bad. You great where you're sitting there. You great. People watching you simple. So you're not simple. Once God is in you, every host of the devil must bow. Hallelujah. The wicked saint. Get on their knees. Hallelujah. Heaven tremble. Hell tremble. Because power is going forth. So we must be willing to admit God. He said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You think this is just a talk? No. This is the word of God. Once you know the truth of God, you cannot settle for nothing less. Say, Pastor, I'm sorry. I have no bad intention, but I can't do that. I can't do that. I just can't. No. <laughs> Amen. That would... <laughs> Man, let us give God praise. Amen. So as we were looking at this thing with the tradition of men and all these different things that have nothing to do with God, it's a, it's a sideshow from the devil to make you believe that because you're doing this, you think in your brain that you know God. But you're wrong. You must be born again. So no tradition, nothing from your forefathers, nothing like that is no proof that you're on your way to heaven. The proof that you're on your way to heaven is that your life has been transformed according to 2 Corinthians 5.17, which is the miracle of God. Any man in Christ has become a new creation. The whole world know he's not the same. Your whole family know you're not the same. Yes, you might have struggles, but they know you change though. They know you're moving ahead though. This is the miracle of God. And once we have come to that place, God is hoping that we share that good news that men could know that there is hope in God. There is hope in Jesus. We can be changed. We can have struggles. But you know what? We are moving down the upward way. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Call your life. Good afternoon. Yes, man of God. God bless you, man. How are you doing? God bless you, my brother. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, the Bible said, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed account to the word of God. You can't do nothing unless it is the word. If it's not the word. It's the wrong way. And there is no there is no other way you can put it, you know what I'm saying? And you just you just do the right thing, that's it. You just follow the spirit of God and when the spirit of God lead you, you can't go wrong, you know what I'm saying? Bless God. So whatsoever 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 God put on your mind over this radio station, my brother, you just um obey God and you just tell it just like it is. It doesn't matter. I mean, not as what you say. You know, I say it to, it to displease anybody. But it is just the way how God wants it to be. And that's the only way. Whether I am vexed, whether another person is vexed, it's up to them if they want to vex. But it is just the word of God. And what God said, that is what he meant. Not less, not more. That's what he means. So you just continue to preach the word of God, man, because the word of God is, word, is the word of God. Hallelujah. Because remember, remember with them Esau and Jacob, and when God told Rebekah that there are two nations in his belly, and the, the, the eldest shall serve the younger, and Esau came out before, so Esau was the oldest one, Jacob was the youngest one. So him... And, and God have a way. You see, you see, um, Esau sell his birthright, and after Esau sell his birthright, then he go back, um, um, the father come back and bless Jacob, which was, which it was for Esau. So listen to me. If a God's plan, a God's plan, and no matter who, whether the man could have rich, you could have bad, you could have whatsoever, if a God plan, a God plan, and no man in this world can go against God. Because he said that, listen, if you fall, if you fall on him, you will be broken. But if him fall on you, you shall be turned to powder. So God's word Hallelujah. is God's word. And my brother, you just continue to preach the word of God. And I'm, I tell you something, I'm going to pray for you that God will continue to use you. 
Hallelujah. As, a instru- as an instrument to let people know what God meant. Because, yes, a lot of times we as, we said as Christians, we don't even know what we're doing because we're not following the Word of God. We are just, just man-made, come up with this, and man-made, come up with that. And we believe in ourselves that, you see, because, look, the Bible says, man ways is not God ways. But God ways is God ways because God knows what best. He made us. He created this. He said, listen to me, let there be light, and there was light. And that's his word. Hallelujah. So it's just the word of God. So, my brother, continue to do what you're doing Bless under the, the spirit of the under the spirit of the living God. Because so far, my spirit bear witness, and I know of a truth that I'm following the true and the living God, the one who died upon Calvary Cross, and the one that said that he was going to be buried and he was going to be risen. And that's the one I'm serving. No, nothing else. Nobody. No, no man made nothing. I'm serving the true and living God. And I know that if you serve in God, there is no way on earth you can go wrong. There's no way. Because that's the confidence that I have in my God. Hallelujah. That He is perfect. So He does continue, can continue doing what you're doing, sir. Bless and God bless you, man. Bless and I Jesus. will always, I will, uh, whenever I get the chance, whenever I can stay at my, my home, they really don't pick up like that. But it's only like when I'm in my car and I, I you know, I turn on the radio to Choice Radio and I could get to voice my, you know, uh, my, my little input. And man, God bless you, man. God, God bless, you. bless you. Also, we have yes. an app. You could download the app, you know, download the app on your phone. Yes, I have it. I have it on my phone. I have it on so my phone. So you, you can play it in the house and plug it to your speakers and do like my friend in um, in um, North Carolina. They play it like a big mm-hmm. stereo. Plug it through the speakers and you know. <laughs> so we bless God for yeah, you, yeah, yeah. So be encouraged. Yes, man. Amen. Yes, sir, I will, man. And God you bless too, man. you. God bless you, man. Amen. Have a good one. You too, my brother. In Jesus' Good. name. All right. Amen. Good. Fifteen minutes after two o'clock. I want to make one more statement here as we're speaking about tradition and looking at how dangerous tradition can be. Now, there is a scripture in the book of John. Let's turn to John for a minute. And we have heard this said over and over. And based on how it's said, it might come off to song a certain way. Now, in, in, in John 9, 9, and, and let's take it, um, okay, let's take that caller and we're going to come back. Caller, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Minister. Um, I don't know if you heard that little news this morning um, Alan came on and I was trying to get her to get going but I pick up a little of that the lady saying is out of state not in New York City she has a, th- a theater and she said she's not going to let Beauty and the Beast show in her theater so they ask her why she said because in the movie there is a gay thing in the movie and the, 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 um, they asked her why she don't want it. She said to them, because, now it's not about money, it's not about what you could have or what you could get, it's what God tell us, she's living by the word of God. And when I hear that, I jump off, I'm like, thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord. And I was like, if every Christian, every follower, Christ <laughs> thinks and act like that woman. My God, this world will be a better place with with, with follow of Christ. Hallelujah. I was like, do you hear that? She just refused to get millions of dollars in her theater. I said, that's a woman of God. You, the Lord. you, you look out for that news. I, I pick it up on ten ten win this morning when my alarm came on. Mm-hmm. You look up, you might get exactly where is that theater, which part of uh, New um, America is, mm-hmm. is that theater? Because I didn't get that part. I just get where she starts when they when they, um, they asking her, well, why you don't want this movie show in your theater? And she was telling them the reason why. And I was like, God, you, you are awesome. Mm-hmm. If every fall believers and follower of you think and do like this lady, we're untouchable. We will be untouchable. Hallelujah. So, Minister, I was walking the street one day, and a guy came up to me, always in my face. 
And he's like, you all you Christian? I said, listen, I'm a follower of God, Christ. And he's like, no, I tell him I'm a follower of God. And he said to me, you are God. And I look at him straight in his face. I said, no, I'm not God. I'm a follower of God. Oh, Jesus and Christ, he just, hallelujah. Jesus Christ. And he just believed. And, and you know, I look at him and I was like, and I read my voice at him. And then he said to me, I see a difference in your face. I said, because you're trying to make me a fool. Don't do that. I know what I know. I'm living by the word of God. Don't tell me I'm God. Bless God. So, so Amen. anyway, minister, you have a good one. You too, indeed. Bless God. 18 minutes on the other side of 2 o'clock. Thank you, caller, indeed, for that input. And that's why the scripture said in Matthew 5, you know, Matthew 5 and 13, he said that ye are the salt of the earth, but, 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 if the salt lost its savor, well it shall it be salted question it is therefore henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of man if the church of Jesus was only standing up and say guess what we're not taking this foolishness we're not going to allow you to pass no law to do this guess what they can't do it they can't do it because God will bring the conviction Hallelujah. But if nobody stand up, then they shall trodden on the feet of men. They will walk over the Christian. They will step over you. Because why? Your light is out. They will walk all over you. Because they're walking in darkness. They're walking. They catch anything they, anything they catch to walk on. Because they, if you're walking in darkness, everything you catch, you're walking on top of it, you know. But if I have a light to see where I'm going, I'm going to walk in a certain way. So he that have light, you put it off. Nobody don't know where to walk. And that's why the country in America has been deteriorating over and over. And we quoted that before. All this is biblical, Bible. We assure you before, in the Word of God, also in the book of Daniel and Revelation, that that Obama that just passed, this administration, is in the Bible. It's right there. He came in peaceable. He came in as a lamb. When he came in, everybody loved him. Everybody say whatever. White, black, everybody. And when he left, he left as a dragon. He left as a beast. He left things in place. That is an abomination unto the Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But he came in in peace. He came in beautiful. And when he left, and people were blinded, nobody saw what he did. Nobody saw, no, nobody said nothing. Everybody sit there and let him pass all these laws against God. Huh? But he who have eyes to see, let him see. As to hear, let him hear. Glory to God. That's why God bring a rogue now. All you're playing, all you're wicked, I'm going to bring a man to chastise all you now. All you're playing, all you're wicked, I'm going to bring something for all you. I'm going to give all you something. Because many of all you, I take all you from the Caribbean, I take all you from everywhere and bring all you to America and give you a better life. And all you are not serving me. I'm going to give you a man to chase you, to make you run and hide in a hole. I'm going to bring a man for you. Is that all you want? That's all you want? This Bible is real. God is real, brethren. We must come to a place to acknowledge the true and living God. God is real. And all the scriptures are there. They're right in the Bible. Glory to God. Amen. So that Matthew 5. Amen. But um, I was saying this here. Concerning tradition and religion and denomination. Now hear this here in the word of God, John 9. Then they reviled nine and twenty-eight. Then they reviled him and said, "Thou art his disciples, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is." The man answered and said unto them, "Why therein is a marvelous thing that ye know not whence he is, and yet he had opened my eyes." Listen to this. Now, we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. The Pharisees are saying, that is what we know. This is not a Bible verse to be used anyhow. Because somebody could believe that this scripture is saying, God don't listen to sinners. 
He is saying, we are Moses' disciples. And this is what we know. Amen? Amen? They're saying that this is what we know. So you might know it a different way, but we who follow Moses, this is what we know. Let's read it again. Then they reviled him, thou art his disciples, but we are Moses' disciples. And we read before in the scripture that God is saying, I will raise up a prophet greater than Moses. I will raise up a man that I am going to speak to. A matter of fact, even Moses told them, when this Jesus come, you listen to him. Amen. So they're saying, you are his disciples and you don't know that. We are Moses' disciples. We know that God speak unto Moses as for this fellow, we know not whence he is. The man answered and said unto them, Why therein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is? And yet he had opened my eyes. Amen? Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man is a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. They are still speaking from the Torah. They are still speaking from the commandment of God. They are not speaking from Jesus. Because God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe it, amen, so a sinner come to God, repent of his sins, God will listen to him. But they're saying what we know. We don't know about the Jesus part of it. We know from over here. We know from our tradition that God don't listen to sinners. Amen. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man was not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou was it altogether born in sins, and do it thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that. They had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Do it thou, thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou art both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Amen. Glory to God. And then Jesus Jesus said, For judgment I, I come unto this world, that they which see not might see, and they which might see might be blind, maybe be blind. Sorry, let, let, again, let, sorry. 39. And Jesus said, For this, for, for, said, For judgment I am come into this world, for judgment, that they which see not might see, and, they, and that they which see might be made blind. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are ye blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. So when we read that scripture, it's important that we read this scripture in context. It's a very powerful and potent scripture. But the Pharisees, it's saying from their religion, for their tradition, this is what we know. We don't know nothing else. We know that God listens not to sinners. Amen. So the scripture is not saying that God doesn't listen to sinners. And the Bible is not saying that God doesn't listen to sinners. The Pharisees is saying that this is what we know. From our tradition, that's what we know. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. So, guys, we thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for your calls. And everybody, we thank you so much. Um, we're going to take a musical break and a few community announcements. And we're going to come back and play some music. And around um, 3 o'clock, Pastor 49 will be here to answer your questions from the Bible. So, we bless God for each and every one of you right here this afternoon on Choice Radio. Thank you so much. Be encouraged, brethren, in the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 